just remain standing a moment. We bow our hearts now before God. Our Heavenly Father, we are indeed grateful for the privilege of being here today, assembled together in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray you forgive our sins, and as we are here to turn our attention towards the eternal things and the life that lays beyond this mortal reach, now we pray that you will give us of your direction of how that we must turn, what we must do in the future and even in the present now to uh, gain that place that we have been promised. There are many that are sick and needy in the land, and they haven't completed their journey in our great enemy, not only our enemy, but your enemy, has come to beset them and to and to stop their life and to send them to a, a premature grave. And we're asking for them today that you and your mercy and grace, Lord, will extend their days to the allotted time. Laying upon the platform of the pulpit here lays handkerchiefs and parcels and out in the halls and around the places them on cot stretchers, sick and afflicted, standing in the audience with hardly enough strength to stand on. O oh, eternal God, blessed one, may you hear our prayer this morning through the blood of the Lord Jesus, Amen. not looking at our iniquity, but knowing that he stood in our place and he's the one that's representing us for this prayer. May each and every one be healed for your glory, Lord. Bless these handkerchiefs when they're laid upon the sick, may they recover. Now, Father, until we wait for the great healing service we believe will follow, Break to us the way of life, Lord, that we might know through thy word what we should do. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. As always, this is deemed uh, one of my highest uh, privileges is to be in the house of God and um, to speak to his people. And now I know it's very congested, and I have a very long lesson. Amen. So I'm, I, I trust that, that you'll be comfortable as possibly you can be until we finish the message. Now, it's hot, but we're grateful for the air conditioner, but a group of this size, there would be an old air conditioner could take care of it. See, because your own body is a generating unit about 98 degrees, and it's constantly putting out heat and um, sitting close together, but I, I trust that God will make you just as comfortably as he can. And when we are uh, in building gatherings like this, I, I wouldn't have you come here by no means if I didn't think it was to help you, if I didn't think that it was doing you good and that you'd profit by it, by coming. And then knowing, too, that we don't have too much longer to do this, that we're, we're coming to the, the very closing hours, and I'm, I want to make every moment count that I can for his kingdom. And now I'm trusting that the Lord God will bless us as we've assembled, and I want to comment you that yesterday I was going to different places out seeing some of the sick and afflicted in the motels, and I got to meet some of the managers this week, some of the eating places, like I was over to the ranch house this week over here, and the manager was shaking my hand as we started out, and he said, um, he called me Brother Bram, I wonder how he knew me, and he said, uh, I said, are you the manager? He said, I'm the owner. So then he said, uh, yeah, your people come in here to eat from down there. He said, they, and I said, well, I guess the overcrowd you, he said, sir. That's one of the finest bunch of people that i ever seen. He said they're really nice. I went to a, a motel yesterday to see a young lady I wanted to talk to. Her father and mother was present. I had to go to the manager to find out where the, the, mot the room they were in. He said, in your Brother Branham? That's up at the Oaks. And I said, yes, sir. He said, I want to shake your hand. He said, he in introduced me to his wife, very nice couple. They said, every person in this motel is tending your services. We reserved it for them. And said, all of our other customers, we turned down. 
And I said, well, I thank you for that. He said, Brother Branham, one of the nicest bunch of people I've ever seen are the people that comes up here to the Tangier meetings. I went in last night to a friend of mine, Mr. Becker, down here. And uh, I always liked his sandwiches. He's such a... He's, I knew him when I was a boy. I knew him all my life. There's a couple sitting there from down to the old um, place down to the Riverside Hotel down there. And so the uh, Mr. Becker said, Billy? I said, what is it, Homer? We know one another real well. He said, I'll feed all your people up there. Some 200 or something each Sunday eats at the Blue Boar. And everywhere I go, I hear comments of how nice you are. This fellow said, down on the, the river view down there, said, all that place is tucked up with the people attending the meeting. Then there'd be hundreds won't get to come in. So to be that, to me, you're the salt of the earth. I, I'm so grateful to know that I have the privilege of preaching to people that even sinners and people, I don't say these people are sinners, but I mean people that uh, business and so forth, that can say that you're a nice people and they appreciate you in their business around their places. You know, that's being salty. Amen. I appreciate that. Your behavior, the way you take care of things. I've always said if one comes in and doesn't, hasn't the money to take care of his bill, you just call me up. See? I said, we'll do something about it. And I said, always feed them whether they got money or not. Anything can be done. I feel you're my children. You're, you're the stars that if I ever have one, when I get there, you'll be that jewel outshining part in the, in the crown of my ministry. When it's crowned, you'll be that jewel. And I've been telling you in the times past about the seven seals of church ages and the things that, that's been taking place. And now this morning, I have a very important subject. To me, it's a very blessful one. I hope it strikes you the same way. If I could only give it in the inspiration I received it in, it'd be wonderful. But that'll be up to God to do that. I've been telling you about where, what's happening, and we see all these things taking place. Now, I'm speaking this morning on the future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride, where they're going to live. And... For I trust that by God's grace we're all a part of that great economy of God. And now, I, I trust that you'll bear with me, have your Bibles, your pencils, or whatever you do to read with me, because I'm going to refer to many scriptures, trying to get through in time enough to have a uh, prayer for the sick. And I promise that. You've been praying for the last little while in the rooms and around for the ones who are just almost helpless and hopeless. And, Lord willing, i uh, probably have another service, the 16th, just maybe a prayer for the sick. Start my vacation now since last January I've been traveling. And I'm coming back here. I'm going to take my family to Tucson in the morning. And then I'll return back to spend the time down here in Kentucky with some of my friends hunting and um, squirrel hunting for a couple of weeks or maybe seven or eight, ten days, whatever it is, unless the Lord leads me somewhere else. I never know just where you're going to be. We never know that because that's in the hands of God, God alone. Now, for this great subject, we, we, I suppose if I would take my time on this, because you have to bring in many things, it would take weeks. But I've wrote down some scriptures, some notes, just to hit the highlights of it before it'll let you study. Then soon, maybe the Lord willing, in October, I don't know when, but whenever He will provide, I'd like to have a, a few days, just a constant meeting on the 12th chapter of Revelations to tie in with this year. Uh, uh, oh, I believe it would be great. It would just be, it'd be great to see how I do. And then us coming together. I said last night, I said, you know, when I... In the morning, like every morning, I think when I come down here, I'm going to recognize every one of my friends that's there. Now, how am I going to do it? <laughs> to have with me here, like uh, my good friend, Dr. Lee Vail, sitting back here, his lovely wife and daughter, and Brother Roy Borders, and I think of Brother Ruddle, Brother Beeler, Brother Palmer, 
and Brother Jackson, and, oh my, the, the, them dear uh, brethren from all different parts, Brother Anthony Milano, and oh, everywhere you look, you see somebody there, Brother uh, from down in Arkansas, I can't think of their name, Brother John, Brother Earl, Martin, Brother Blair, and all, oh, there's just, you're just endless, you see. I'm so glad to have a group like that gathered around me when I'm teaching on the Word of God. Man who I think are gallant man, real man of God. I'm thankful for this little tabernacle. I'm grateful for its five open doors to the public. Each door, we have four deacons here, spirit-filled man. Four trustees, spirit-filled man. That's two at each door. And it's got a double door in front for the two pastors, <laughs> the shepherds. <laughs> We're glad to have you. Thankful to God for this. May he ever bless you. Now, we want to stand just a moment while we read from Second Peter, the third chapter, and also from the book of Revelations 21. As we stand, O oh Lord, fill our hearts with gladness because of the reading of thy word, knowing that Jesus has said that heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. Amen. Know again that he said, All Scripture must be fulfilled. Amen. And as we read these things, may we have an understanding from you the hour in which we live. We ask it in Jesus' name, the author of the book. Amen. Second Peter 3. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandments of us, the apostles, uh, of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? If that don't meet this infidel woman, and <clears throat> since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which now are by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and the perdition of ungodly man. But, beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Now the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some man counts slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all might come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens and the earth with a great noise shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall burn up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for the hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that we look for such things, be diligent that you may not be found, may be found of him in peace, without spot, without blemish, and accounting that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, 
even as our beloved Paul, according to the wisdom given unto him, has written unto you, as also all his epistles, speaking in them of the things which are sometimes hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle, rest, as, as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye you know these things before, where lest ye also being led away with error of the wicked fall from your steadfastness, but grow in grace and the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Now, in the, the revelation of Christ, in the 21st chapter, I read these words. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there were no more sea. Now John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adored for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with man, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrowing nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. He said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end, and I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountains of the water uh, of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Let us pray again. Lord Jesus, with such a promise and such stern talk as Jesus himself and the apostle has given us concerning the hour we are approaching. Give us, O Lord, thy direction that we might know how to approach it in the right way because it's coming. We know the Scriptures must be fulfilled, and so shall it be. Now, Lord, we ask your mercy again upon us all as we study thy word. Be with us and unfold it to us, Lord, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Now, I wonder if there could be a way that perhaps maybe they could turn the lights from the main auditorium off and just leave them on the platform here, which would probably be better and take some of the current. We uh, about burned up a transformer the other night, and if the uh, uh, custodian will do that for us, we appreciate turning the bottom lights, off, or the main auditorium lights off. And then I think you'll have plenty of room to see to write. Now, a subject again to announce it, that we are approaching the, the subject of the future home of the heavenly bridegroom and the earthly bride. Now, as it's been, I'm just going to have to do this. It's just too hot. Uh, listen, as we are, I know my wife don't like me to do that, but I have to take my coat off. It's just too hot up here. See, you got air out there and just cut off in a little pin there. Now, in the, um, in the future, or in the past, rather, we have studied the seven seals, the seven churches. Brother Vail and those are working upon those now faithfully to get them in book form. And seeing all these mysterious things that we have seen come to pass, then I think after understanding that in the hour that we're living in, and the position, there's no one that would want to sit down real sensibly and examine what has been spoken of and what is promised to happen and what has happened, but what could say that those things are fulfilled? Amen. Exactly what God said he would do, he did it just exactly to the letter. Now, I think in this that 
not knowing what time that the Lord Jesus might appear, uh, I thought it would be good, it seemed pleasing to the Holy Spirit that we speak on this. And, and maybe come back to it again two or three times because I won't have quite ample time to get all this out as where you hit a, a subject that might be a little stumbling to someone. You can't carry it all the way out to make it plain. Then you come back again to catch the next subject. And then later on, in the, if the Lord willing, we come into the 12 seals, uh, the, not, pardon me, the 12th chapter of Revelations, which lays between the coming of the Lord and the ending of the trumpets and so forth. We'll try to bring that back to show who's Satan, what he did, where he come from, what's his purpose, and how that his great beauty that was giving caused his fall, his deceit caused his fall, beauty, then how that the impossibility for any man that wants to look at it right, that serpent seed, I'd make a challenge to that to anybody see, that would want to look at it with with it's absolutely common understanding. A child can see it. See? Now, and we'll get to that later. Now we understand here that these two scriptures, the reason I read Second Peter, the third chapter, and compared it with Revelation 21, um, they uh, both here are speaking uh, uh, the same subject, but John never never wrote it out like Peter did. See? We understand that this great home of the bride is to be here on earth. And now, if you read just like 21 chapter, 21st chapter of Revelation, the apostle here said, or the prophet said that, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. Sounds like there comes a annihilation. Now, the way I always find my messages is by prayer. I'll be sitting in prayer, and something reveals to me. And I'll wait on a few minutes and see if it's right. Then I feel it closer. And then sometimes I keep waiting until it breaks into a vision. But when it begins to come, and I'm satisfied it comes from God, then I go to the Scripture. See, that is a call to be the confirmation of every spiritual thing that's done. Because the Bible is the complete revelation of Jesus Christ. See? It is his body. And now, in that, maybe I find a place in the Scripture that doesn't sound just right. I wonder. I go back again to prayer. It comes again. Then I, I, then I begin to examine my Scripture. Now, our Bible is wrote in English. And English words change all the time. For instance, like... St. John 14 said, In my Father's house is many mansions. A mansion and a house. Well, then, you, what to do with that? Then, run it back to the, uh, to the uh, original and see what James meant. Or go back to the Hebrew or to the Greek from the first translation. And in there it says, In my Father's kingdom is many palaces. Well, then, you come back to the time that the translators translated for King James. The kingdom was called in English a house, and uh, the king was the father over his delegates. There's the reason they translate, in my father's house is many mentions. See? And then you get those words, and you have to hunt them up. Then you see, from that inspiration, this pulpit this morning, I say, not one time has it ever been nothing but straight the Scripture. That's how serpent seed and all these other things come. See? But, and it's really... If a fellow would just read and say, In my Father's house is many mentions, if you didn't stop to study praying, you'd be all confused. See, but just keep praying. God always makes it right if it comes from God. Now, John explains the change and the come, how it comes about. He doesn't explain it rather, but Peter does. John just said, I saw new heavens and new earth. First heavens and first earth has passed away. There was no more sea. I, John, saw the holy city. Coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adored for her husband. But we turn back to Second Peter now to find out. Peter explains how this process will come about. Now, if you look at what John said, it sounded like, For the first heavens and first earth was passed away, annihilated. See? And that sounds very strange. So that's what struck me, and I begin to look for the word, pass away. And now... 
But it's clear that both of these apostles and prophets were talking of the same thing. And now also in the book of Isaiah, now that you want to put these scriptures down in Isaiah 65, 17, Isaiah speaking of the millennium, that thousand years of rest for the, for the people of God. Isaiah spoke of it, and he said, I, there was a, a, all the former things that passed away and how they'll build houses and inhabit them. If we had time, maybe we just take time Amen. And, and read Amen. this just a minute. Isaiah 65, and let's just read for a few minutes here. And here it is right for us. Now to begin. Isaiah 65, 17. And behold, I create new heavens and a new earth. Now, Isaiah the prophet was one of the prophets that wrote exactly the entire Bible in his prophecy. He starts out with the creation. In the middle of his book, about the 40th chapter, comes around John the Baptist, the New Testament, and winds up here in his book in the Revelations in the Millennium. There's 66 books in the Bible and there's 66 chapters in Isaiah. He wrote a complete commentary. Now, we find out here now he's getting the 65th chapter, one more chapter, and he speaks of the millennium. Notice it, how beautiful. Behold, I create new heaven and new earth, and the former things shall not be re remembered or come into mind. It's to pass away. But believe, be glad and rejoice even in that which I have created. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoice. And her people a joy, and I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her far, nor the voice of crying. There shall be no more thence infinite days, and an old man that has not fulfilled his days. For a child shall die a hundred years old, and a sinner being a hundred years old shall be accused. Then shall, and they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, and shall eat the fruit of them. And they shall not build and another inhabit, that is, your farm, your son fall heir to it, or some of your heirs. They shall not plant and another eat there. They do their own planting and remain there. They got life eternal. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people and my law, mine elect that shall long enjoy the works of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offsprings with them. Now, Lord, it's here's where I'm going to get to after a while. And it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they're yet speaking, I'll hear. And the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. And the lion shall eat straw like a bullock. Thus shall be the serpent's meat, and they shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. What a promise of these prophets and great sages, teachers of the Bible, way back in ancient days, seeing this glorious day come. By these passages, one might think, or be led, rather, to believe that the whole planet of this earth will be destroyed. I make a new heaven and a new earth, see? that the heavens will be gone and the earth will be gone, completely annihilated. But a close study, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can see the truth of this, and that's what we're going into. It is only the atmospheres around it and the sin that's up on the earth that will be destroyed. See? Now, we realize that the heavens means the atmospheres above. What does it do? It uh, Then these thistles and sickness and death and politics, and sinful man and sinful woman and evil spirits will all be gone away and annihilated. It has to be done that way because we are going to live right here. We we'll prove that by the Bible. Right here is where we live. Now notice, thistles, germs, all the sicknesses and things will be completely uh, taken away. All this its existence 
that's in the earth now, man-made systems, politics, sin, all kinds of evil spirits that the world is contaminated with and all the heavens above us and here is contaminated with evil spirit. Now, we're going to go deep and long in this. See? All this exists in the heavens or atmospheres and the earth which is now. This earth holds those things. But it wasn't made for that purpose. Sin caused it to be like that. It was made by God, the Creator. But all and all of our bodies that we live in now was put on the earth when God created it. Because you're out of the dust of the earth. It was all laid out here when God Himself created. You were in His thinking. And in Him the great eternal was the thought which is his attribute. And now sin caused all this to happen, and God through this age is gathering up his material. Satan is still here. That's the reason all these things happen. He's still here. And all of his evil forces are still here. Notice, that's why the earth now is so filthy. That's why the scum and ridiculous things that goes on, bloodshed, war, politics, sin, adultery, all kinds of filthiness goes on is because that Satan is the ruler of this earth and this atmosphere. He said, the atm yes, sir. Both the heavens and earth now is contaminated with devils that can accuse us before God. Jesus is there to intercede for us. Huh? See? While the accusers keep pointing a finger, they did this, they did this, they did this, but the blood still covers. He came to redeem that elected that he foresaw. That's why it's so filthy today. Here the apostle in Second Peter, here the second chapter and the fifth and the, and the fifth and sixth verse. Yes, I've got it. He refers to three stages of the earth. He, he gets three stages of it. Notice how he brings them. The old world stood out of the water. Now, that was the antediluvian world. Now, the one it is, the present world we live in now, called it a world. The old world that stood out of water, Genesis 1.1. Now, and the world that is now present. And then again, he refers to another, the world that is to come, the new world. Three worlds, three stages of the world. And notice how God makes plain to us his plan of redemption. Oh, this just thrilled my soul when I saw it. How he makes plain to us here now his plan of redemption. Now compare what we see with our own eyes, what God has done to redeem his world. He's done the same plan to redeem his people. Amen. For the unchangeable God changes not any of his plans or anything. Amen. Such a glorious thing. How he led us to himself, to a, a tabernacle in us, by three stages of grace, just like he's led the world in three stages to come through the world. As God will come to the world after it's gone through three different uh a stages of purification, that's exactly how he comes to us through three stages of grace. I taught that at the beginning. I've never changed since. It's God's Word. You have to keep your threes together, your sevens, your twelves. The pneumatics of the Bible must run perfect or you'll get your picture all mixed up. If you can't understand it, just keep praying. You watch. It'll cut right in exactly. God is perfected in threes. Notice, the old world, the antediluvian, the world is present now and the one to come. Now, first stage that he brings us to, see, his plan of redemption is exactly the same by everything. He uses the same method. He never changes. He said in Malachi 3, I am God and I change not. The way he does it, therefore, if he saved the first man he ever saved by the shed blood of an innocent one, he'll have to save the next one and every one he saves will have to be the same way. 
If he healed a man at any time through the journey of life, let it be in the days of Jesus, the apostles, the prophets, whenever it was, when the same conditions is met, he's got to do it again. That's right. He doesn't change. Man changes, time changes, age changes, dispensation changes, but God remains the same. It's perfect. What a hope that ought to give the sick people. If he ever healed a person, he has to do it again when the same conditions is met. He ever, ever saved a man, he's got to do it on the same grounds he did it the first time. If he ever filled a man with the Holy Ghost, he's got to do it on the same grounds he did the first time. If he ever raised a man up from the grave, he's got to do it the second time and every other time on the same principle. Amen. Doesn't change. Oh, what a hope that gives me. What is it? Not in some man-made theory, something that groups of men have come together, but his unchangeable word. You say, is it the truth? He said, let every man's word be a lie and mine be true. For heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. All Scripture is given by inspiration. Therefore, it's good and profitable for doctrine. And remember that all Scripture will be fulfilled. Every bit of it. Notice how God makes it plain to us. And if that wasn't a, a great a confirmation, a, good, a great loving blessing from God, when I see this and see that since a boy, first time ever Christ dealt with me, I've still always taught those three stages of grace. Notice it isn't true now. Now, the first step is repentance towards God. And then follows after that is water baptism. Water baptism, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. See? Water baptism follows showing that repentance was genuine. Or to remit our past sins. Now, it has nothing to do with future sins. It only remits. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. What for? Remission. Taking away a past sin has nothing to do with the future. Just your uh, sin has been chopped off. What you did, you can't repent for what Adam done. You never done it, Adam did. You just get forgiveness for what you done. The old nature is still there. Let me take this board just a minute. Now, here is a human heart. Now, I'm not, I'm always to been an artist. Here is a human heart. And here is a human heart. Now, this one over here has a snake in it. That's sin. Here he has his life. This one over here has a dove in it, which is the Holy Spirit. Here he has a life. Well, this one here has malice, hatred, envy. That's what's causing us this fellow here. Well, this over here has love and uh, joy and uh, long-suffering, and that's what does it down here. Amen. Now, Amen. when you are asked or you are forgiven of your sins, you've only done this, taken that away. But the thing that made you do it is still there. Amen. That's the old root of evil. It's still there. Notice, then you repent and are baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that He forgave you of your sins. Notice. Then secondly comes sanctification, which sets our mind in order for holiness to think right. Amen. Taken away. Sanctification is a compound Greek word which means cleaned and set aside for service. Amen. Then the next comes the baptism of the fire and Holy Ghost, that God might dwell in us, and the fire of God cleanses our hearts Amen. from sin and puts the Holy Ghost inside, then we bring forth the same life that this did because it's in us. Amen. Notice, in the natural birth, 
When a woman gives birth to a baby, the natural life types the spiritual life. When a woman gives birth to a baby, the natural, the first thing happens is breaking of water, then blood, and then the spirit, life. Grab the little fellow and spank him, and away he goes, screaming. Water, blood, spirit. And now, when a baby is born into the kingdom of God, he comes the same way. Water, blood, spirit. I notice sanctification. The third stage, second stage of it, cleanses the mind, sets the heart, the mind of the heart, in order of holiness. A man can repent of sins, and he's still thinking of, well, maybe he's a, a, a immoral man. Every immoral-looking woman he finds is still there. Maybe he's a drunkard. Every time he smells the drink, it's still there. See? But then when he gets sanctified, that cleanses that desire out of him. See, it takes the want of it away. He can still be tempted, but he takes the want of it away. Still, he's not right yet. Then he is baptized with the Holy Ghost in fire, cleansed, burnt out, cleaned up, and then put into the service of God. Sanctification only sets him aside for service. And notice just exactly how that comes. The message is coming. Martin Luther, justification. John Wesley, sanctification. The Pentecostal, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. The message. That's where there can't be no more ages of it, see? We're at the end time. Three stages. Baptism cleanses the heart with the Holy Ghost. How striking now. He takes the place where... We are to dwell in through the same process. Now, he's called the church through justification, called it through sanctification, then filled it with the Holy Ghost and fire, and he took it through a process that he himself, the Holy Spirit himself, the Son of God, could dwell in the human heart. Now, it has to go through that before he can come into it. Notice, he done the world where that bride's going to live in the same way. The same plan of, of salvation. Notice the antediluvian world. He, after it had repented by, through the bride of that day, Noah, he gave it a water baptism, covered it over with water. Then justification, showing it is on his road to call this fallen world from Eden back to its restoration again. Then Christ came and shed his blood upon it, cleansing it and claiming it. See? That's the world that we live in now. See how Satan here in the Scripture tried to make him break God's plan to receive it, give it to him when he took him up on the mountain, and tried to give it to him without the purchase of the blood? You notice how Abraham, when they tried to give him the land, he... Bought it with so many shelkins of silver and before the people as a ensign, as a witness. Let it be known this day that I bought this burying place. See? Purchase it. And Satan tried to, to give him the kingdom which belongs to him now. He tried to give it to him as a gift. But he wouldn't receive it. Because, see, then Satan could still have claim on it. But it had to be bought. Amen. Amen. He was the word in the fullness thereof. They couldn't deceive him in it. Then it is now to get a baptism of fire. See, it is now what happened. Christ came and called the church to repentance, baptism in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission, sanctified the church. And with the fire of God come down and burn out all the filth and come and dwells in the human heart. Now the world to be redeemed for this redeemed person, he uses the same method. He baptized it in water at the antediluvian destruction, shed his blood up on it to sanctify it and claim it. It's his. Satan tried to say, I'll give it to you. He said, no, sir, I'll buy it. <laughs> Let it be a witness. He was lifted up for an ensign. That he bought it, he purchased it. But now it has to go through a baptism of fire. Holy fire from God which cleanses the earth and the heavens around it. Then it's purchased so that the redeemed can live on it. Live in it in peace. 
Notice, the baptism of fire is to cleanse it from sin, from sickness, from disease germs, from sinners, from the devil and all of his group. He's to be cast out into the lake of fire. Holy fire from God comes down from God out of heaven and burns it up. Notice, to make it ready for God to dwell in. For God in the new world that is to come is to dwell in the earth. Because you say, God, he dwells in the human heart. But he and the bride becomes one and they go to their home in the new world. And the same plan of redemption is used to redeem both world and the persons that live in it. See, the heart has to be cleansed like that. Before God can come down in the person of the Holy Ghost, which is Christ, coming down and dwell in the human heart, it first must be repented. It must be baptized in water in his name to show who it belongs to. Then it must be cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And then the holy fire and Holy Ghost from God comes down and burns out all the desire of sin, all the nature of the world. And therefore, he that sins willfully at your receiving the knowledge of the truth. Then again, the Bible said it's impossible for a, a man that's born of God cannot sin. He does not sin. There's no way for him to sin. How can he be a sinner and a redeemed at the same time? How can I be in the pawn shop and out of the pawn shop at the same time? Oh, he redeemed us by his blood. By his spirit, he cleansed us and then comes to dwell in us, the church. Not the denomination now, the church. Notice close now as we take this. The places we are to, to dwell in. Now, now the, uh, the antiluvian repentance then brought water baptism. Then Christ came and shed his blood upon it to cleanse it and to claim it. And then comes the next to the destruction of the world as it is now. All the sin that's in the heavens above. He's the prince of the power of the air. He keeps off, wars off the blessings from God. In there comes thunderbolts of lightning and strikes the earth and everything from the heavens. Sheets of slice and rain and typhoons, ty storms and everything comes from above, which is Satan, the prince of the power of the air. Notice. See how Satan tried to take it, as I said a few minutes ago, by um, giving it to Jesus without buying it. Then Satan still has a claim because it's earmarked. See? But Jesus buys it by his shed blood and brings it back to the rightful owner. That's how he bought us by his blood, how he bought the church. Now, it's baptism of fire cleanses from all germs, all diseases, all sicknesses, even all the spiritual things, which is by us too, that does the same way, to make it ready for God to dwell in, in this great age that's to come the new earth. See, he redeems it in the same way he does his people. He makes it all just the same as plan of redemption. For he is the unchangeable God, always the same in his plan. How I have told you before, and make it known to you, and by all ages, that God cannot change. He makes it known every way by the same. He made it known his first message in the Andalusian world by Noah the prophet. I was talking to a dear brother who's sitting present with me now yesterday. He said one thing. He said, Brother Bram, it always shook me. I said, what is it, brother? And he said, here's what you said. And it's true. The minority, how a little group is going to be saved in the days of coming. And we talked of how Jesus said, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, and but few there will be that will find him. Now notice the Bible said, as it was in the days of Noah, wherein eight souls were saved by water. So shall it be in the coming. I said, brother, you just got, he said, remember, there's only eight souls there. I said, you just got half the picture. Yet, Noah was a type of the remnant that's carried over. Not the translated bunch. Enoch, one man, went in the rapture before the flood came. 
showing that the church does not go into the tribulation or anything around it. Enoch was translated. One man. Oh, the church may be a number, but the bride is going to be a very small group. That'll make up the bride. Now, the church may be a great number, but the bride, you see, compare eight with one. Eight times less will be the bride than the church. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where will the sinner and the ungodly appear? Those who know better to do it and go ahead and do it anyhow. Those who follow the rules of denomination instead of the Word, where will they appear at? Yet call Christians, taking the name of Christ. Now, perfectly, Noah was a type of those carried over. Remember, when Noah come out, Ham was with him. Sin was still in there. Sin went right on over through the ark. Unbelief, doubt, went over in the ark, carried above the judgment. But Enoch went higher than the ark. He went on into the presence of God. But Noah went through and come out, and there was still sin. Type of the millennium, of the world's condition. The millennium is not the end of it. There will still be time after the millennium. The millennium is a space of time, but not the new earth. No, indeed. Notice in that, we'll get to it after a bit. See, the earth, redeemed, goes back to its original owner again. It took, he took it from Satan. He pulled, taking the earth away from Satan, just like he took you away from Satan. Like he took the little woman at the well away from Satan. There stood the priest, thought he was with God, and he had nothing. See? I'd like to draw that for you just a moment. Now, we want to get this real clear, so now watch close now on this teacher. Now, this year, here is God. God, which is the eternal. Without, there's no one but Him. But in God, He had attributes. Now, this year, it represents the Word. The Word of God, which is made flesh and dwell among us in the person of Jesus. Now, this year, fellow here, we're going to make him like this. the woman at the well. This is the priest Pharisee. And where you see this open blackboard means grace and salvation. Now, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The three stages, it was an attribute first, was in God, that he thought of himself as being human, and that transmitted him down to be Jesus. Now, if you'll ever be there, you was with him then. Yeah. For there's only one form of eternal life. That's God. Amen. And you had to be a part of God at the beginning. Yeah. Amen. Not what you just chose down here. He chose you. Amen. All the Father has given me will come. Amen. Now look at this priest here. We find his bottom part here, his back life, back behind him, his predestination back here, is sinful. Here's hell down here. Now, this little part in here looks like the blackboard. That represents his purity. He was a priest. He was an honorable man. That represented this. He was also had to be a good man, or he couldn't be a priest. But you see how he got it was intellectual learning. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this little woman, her first life up here, she's a prostitute. She was all marred up. But way down in her here was just a little bit of understanding. I know when Messiah cometh. Yeah. That was there. Notice, when Jesus came and manifested the Word, because the Word discerned the thoughts that was in the heart, as Hebrews 4 uh, uh, says it will, 4.12, that He would, the Word was a discerner of the thoughts of the heart, and He came as the Son of Man, the prophet. What happened? This priest with only intellectual learning, it's a devil. 
Because that's what his denomination called it. What did he do? He had no representation, so it blacked him out. But this little woman had nothing to present. She's as filthy and dirty as she could be. But notice, way down in her, she's got representation. And then she was looking for this to be made flesh. And when he said, go get your husband and come here, she said, sir, I have not. That you said the truth because you got five and the one you have now. It's not yours, you've had five. That makes six you have. She said, sir, not, you're not Beelzebub. I perceive that you are a prophet. Amen. Now we know the Messiah, which is called Christ, will come. Amen. And he does heal to this. Amen. He said, I'm he. No more doubt. Amen. You didn't have to explain it. Amen. She saw it. Away yeah. she went. Why? Yeah. 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 What did he do to her? It redeemed her. Yeah. Now watch. He came to be a redeemer. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. What does redeem mean? Bring back. Yeah. Why didn't he get the priest? He never was up there. Yeah. 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 He had no representation. He came to redeem that which had fallen. Yeah. Yeah. He had fallen. This got messed up with that girl, but God. Had her in his thinking before the foundation of the earth. Then he come to transfer. Then he had he turned. Why? See? Where the priest, what did it do to him? It sent him right back to his destination. He had nothing to begin, only intellectual learning. Now listen, friend. If the only thing you've got is just intellectual learning, you get something different from that. And you'll never be able to get it unless you got representation. That's the reason I believe you come from the east and west, north and south. The Word, living, made manifest. Notice now how He makes His way known by His prophets in the beginning. He's never changed it. Salvation. He justified a man, sanctified him, sent the Holy Ghost in fire, burnt the sin out of him, and dwelt in him himself. He does the earth that he's going to use in a plan of redemption the same way. It repented and was baptized in water in, by Noah. Jesus come and sanctified it by dipping his blood upon it and claimed it. And in the new earth that's to come, it's to have a holy fire baptism to clean it of every devil, every germ, every sickness, everything that there is, and make it anew. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. You become a new person. Amen. Not just an old one patched up by joining church or trying to turn a new page, but you are a complete, brand new unit. God takes the old man and burns him completely out with the Holy Ghost and fire and comes himself, sends down your representation. No man can come to me except my Father has drawn him. And all the Father has given me will come to me. You see it? Same plan, same way. Satan was, will be taken from the earth. Just exactly like Satan was taken from you. Satan cannot bother, or he can tempt, but he cannot get a born-again Christian. For God from the foundation of the world for him and sent Jesus to redeem it. And the blood speaks for him. How can he sin when he can't be seen even by God? He don't even, the only thing he hears is your voice. He sees your representation. Hey, man. That is true. See, by the same means, for the world is one of his attributes, just the same as you are one of his attributes. The world becomes one of his attributes. Because it was God's thinking in the beginning to have a world, to be on a throne, to be a king, to be a redeemer, to be a healer. That's his attributes. Just like an attribute of you. I can't say a, a post lest I think a post. I can't say man lest I think a man. And when I think a man, then say man. The thinking is my attribute, and the expression is the word. Yeah. See? Like Isaiah. How could he say that a virgin was going to conceive? What is a thought? Now, many of you wonder how them, that discernment comes. I'm going to tell you. 
See? It's a word that I say. And it isn't my thinking because I don't know. I don't know all the thinking of it. How can I tell you who you are and where you come from when I don't know you? How can I tell you what you've done ten years ago and I've never seen you in my life? How can I tell you where you do and what you'll do ten years from now? How do I know the future? But it is somebody else's thought. Let the mind that was in Christ be in you. Let the mind that was in Christ be in you. See? Then it isn't your thinking. It's His thinking through you. And you're not expressing your own words. You're expressing His words. That's how many times the brethren gets confused on interpretation of tongues and things. See? They say things that's not right. They don't realize that that's Satan. You say, in the garden of God, just wait till we get through. <laughs> Find out if it's not or not. The weeds and the wheat grow in the same field. Amen. They both live by the same sun and the same rain. <laughs> but if there be one among you who's a prophet, I, the Lord, will speak to him. Amen. And if what he says happens, then that's me. Because <laughs> he's not expressing his own. He's expressing my thoughts. My attributes are the things that has to come. I'll use his mouth to express them by. And after he said them, they've got to come to pass. Heavens and earth will pass away, but my word shall never fail. Isaiah said, a virgin shall conceive. That settles it. She's going to conceive. What God said, he does. Oh, make known by his prophets all of his manifestations because it's his attributes of his thoughts expressed. Now, here it was in this little woman. She was one of his attributes. See? And there was a priest representing the light. He had learned it from the Bible. He had learned that God was God. He had learned that holiness is right. He was learned that there was a law of God. He had learned it because of an intellectual conception. And he was born in the right lineage. He was a Levite. But he only knew it by intellectual conception. And when the light of the hour, see, he learned it, but what had happened? Not what was happening. What had happened? And when he found what was happening, his denomination said nothing about it. Therefore, he had no representation of it. But here was a Redeemer on earth at that time to redeem those attributes of God. And she received it. She never questioned it. She said, well, Messiah comes, he'll do this, and that settled it. And she's seen it done, so he said, I'm the Messiah. So that settled it. Amen. No more questions. She's went telling everybody else. Come see who I found. <laughs> These processes make us clean. A temple for his dwelling place. Justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost. The fire that does the cleansing of this temple. So as old world, frame did not destroy by the waters when it was washed off. The frame of the planet, the old frame, the, all the dirt, all the uh, stuff that God put on the earth was not destroyed when the first world was destroyed, and the Bible said it was destroyed. But it never destroyed the frame. It just destroyed the sin and sinners that was on it. The framework remained. But you see, as justification, as you Baptists and Methodists want to think of it, just justification, believing and being baptized, that's not enough. Amen. You wander right back into the things of the world, bob your hair and wear shorts and everything else. See, there's nothing happened yet. You just look back and see you've done wrong. What did justification do to the world? Never done a thing to it. Started right off again. Just as much sin as it ever was. That's the way a man does, and that's all the farther he goes. That's the way the great evangelist Billy Graham ought to see. He said, I'll go and have 30,000 converts come back in a year, and ain't got 30. That's all the farther they went. See? And surely they repent. I believe they repent. Most of them, or some of them, at least. But that isn't what it takes. It proves it here. Now, so the old world framework was not destroyed by the water. The world was only washed off. That got its baptism. It was baptized. So will the framework remain, though it be burnt with fire. It don't destroy the earth. See? It just destroys the sin that's on it. Notice here, some of you Bible students, especially Dr. Dale looking at me. Notice, in Peter, in the second chapter of Peter, your third chapter, rather, 
he uses the word world as a Greek word, cosmos, which means the world order. The earth shall pass away, melt the elements with fervent heat. See, doesn't mean that the earth, the planet is going to pass away, but the world cosmos, the politics, the sinners, the system, sin, disease, germ, everything that's wrong will pass away. Everything that once God once shook the heavens, but this time he said he'll shake the earth. Heavens and earth. He shook the earth rather than this time he'll shake the heavens. See? For we receive a kingdom that cannot be moved. It's the eternal kingdom. Watch how it goes to it. Notice here Peter said, And will melt with fervent heat, and the works therein burn up. Not the planet, the works therein. The works of man. All their politicians and their schemes and all their denominations and man-made schemes will all go with it. When it burns. And, and uh, heavens will pass away with a great noise. Did you notice here? Heavens will pass away with a great noise. Listen. The whole earth will be on fire and will ignite the gases that's in the earth and explode it. Exactly. Talk, the Bible said here, Peter said, and the heavens will pass away in earth with a great noise. Such an explosion will rocket. Oh, my. Because it's got to kill every disease, every thistle, every thorn, everything there is to be done, the fire will burn it up. And remember, it's not altogether just a literal fire, it's also a holy fire. See? That will take away Satan and all of his, all the devils, both heaven and earth. Amen. Will pass away, killing all the germs, all the insects, all natural life on it and around it. Even the H2O, the water, will explode. Think of it. Talk about a noise. You think that little noise I hear in Tucson was something when he opened the six seals that shook the country around about and caused the talk. Wait till this earth receives her baptism. You know, when a man receives the baptism of fire, there's a lot of noise around there. They think that's a shame to hear people scream and shout like that. Just wait till this earth gives her baptism. Yeah. It'll explain, explode it. The H2O, the water. For the Bible said here in Revelation 21, and there was no more sea. Explode it. This will change the whole surface of the entire earth. Amen. She'll burst and blow to pieces. All the outside, the crust, and for hundreds of feet below, it'll just simply be completely demolished. The atmospheres, the gases that's in the earth now where they're finding these missiles that can't get to it, a great sphere up in there, way up in some kind of a sphere that there's all kinds of gases, they say. And that'll burst. The holy wrath of God will come up on it. And will cleanse it. Will change the entire service. Now, many of you won't put on this word, the Greek word, pass away. It comes from the word I had to find. I thought, how is this world going to pass away, and yet we're going to live on it? But if you'll notice, some of you people want to put it down. I'll spell it for you. I couldn't pronounce it. P-A-R-E-R-E-C-H-O-M-I-A. I don't know how to pronounce it. Now, that way, as I said, when I get the inspiration strikes me for something, then I go back to find out the word. Now, here I can't spell the word. I can't, I can't pronounce it. But in that, the Lord is still giving me a way. I go and find out what that word means. Then I got it. Okay. Then I got it again. See, uh, heavens and earth will pass away. Now, this word means passing from one form to another. It does not mean annihilation. As the English word would mean pass away, it's annihilated. But the Hebrew word or the Greek word here does not mean pass away. It means from passing from one thing to another. Look. But to pass from one condition, it says, to another. Now notice, Paul used it, if you want to read it now, put it down, you can read it later. In Titus 3, 5, Paul is using this same word, means regeneration of man. That man has passed from a sinner to a saint. Not completely annihilated. When a man's changed, he isn't annihilated, but he's a changed person. He's been changed from what he was to what he is. Not annihilated. Jesus used the same word in Matthew 19, 28. Now, not 28, 19. Now, 19, 28. 
He said to them, You're set with me in my Father's kingdom. Regenerated, you see. Change, when you're changed. He used the same word. And he used the same word when he said to the colt, that loose the colt and let him go. said the same thing at the resurrection of Lazarus. Loose him. Change him. He's been tied. Let him go. What does it mean? The earth will be loose from the grip of Satan. It'll be loose. It'll be loose from politics. It'll be loose from denominational religious systems. To be used for the kingdom of God. To be established it here on the earth. But as long as it's in the hands of Satan, politics, Satan the ruler of the earth, he owns it. It belonged to him, but now Christ has redeemed it. One time I was his property, but not now. One time that little woman was his property, but not now. Amen. He come to loose the grip of it. Amen. He loosed the grip of sin of Satan upon my life, upon your life. Amen. And now we're not his. Amen. Have you often heard me say in prayer, take your hands off of God's property. Amen. Amen. Have faith to claim your own. Amen. That's your rights. Take your hands off of her. Take your hands off of me. See? Faith will do it. Oh, my. Not annihilate it, but just take your hands off of it. To loose it. Let it go. Pass it away. It changes. The earth will change. Politics will change. The religions will change. The denominations will pass away. Politics will pass away. Kingdom of God shall be established. We read in John, uh, read John in Revelation 6, 14. See, it departed as a scroll. The Bible said the, that it, the, John said, I saw the heaven and earth depart as a scroll. John, Revelation 6, 14. Jesus said, heavens and earth shall pass away. Or in other words, heavens and earth shall be changed. Use that same word right there again. No, not annihilated. For later in Revelation 21... 2 to 24, he seen the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven and sitting upon this earth. It doesn't mean that it'll be annihilated. The systems will be changed. Daniel saw the same thing. Rock struck the world. It was shoot out without hands. And the whole image of the systems was broke down and become like a chaff on a summer threshing floor, and the wind packed it away. And the rock itself grew into a great mountain that covered the earth. Watch that mountain down a little bit. That mountain covered the earth. Also, we find out here, over in, also in Revelations there, it said the kings of the new earth will bring their honor and glory into it. And the earth is sitting, the new Jerusalem is sitting on this earth. See, it's just changed. You're the same man in statue. That you was when God called you. Same woman. But you see, what it did, it was a regeneration. The old life passed away. The old desires passed away. When you used to like to drink and cuss and fuss and stew and run around and immoral, that thing just died. See? But now you are used and you are Satan's instrument. Now you are redeemed. And that's what the world will be the same way, redeemed. A new heavens and new earth is like you. You are a new creature. And the Greek word there, anybody knows, said you are a new creation. Amen. 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 A new creation in the same old temple. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Watch what happens here now. Glorious. All right. Now we find that this earth will hold the kings of the earth. And again, in Matthew 5, 5, Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. It isn't going to just go to have another earth. It's just going to be the same earth. I'm trying to get the, the plan of redemption to you before, if I don't get nothing else, see? The baptism of fire on it only is to cleanse it and make it a fit place for his meek to live in. See? Oh. Like it did us, this creation to live in, before he could come in it, he had to give us the baptism of fire. Then the Holy Ghost come in and live. Amen. Baptism of fire. Then when you get that baptism of fire, then the Holy Ghost can come in. What does it does? It burns up everything contrary to the word out of you. Amen. See? 
It won't believe nothing else but the Word. Because it is the Word. Uh, that's what we was talking the other day, the evidence of the Holy Ghost. See, the evidence of the Holy Ghost is when you can receive the Word. Not some system, but have a clear understanding. How you know the Word's clear understanding? What's it vindicate itself? Well, you say, I see this to it, that. Oh, yes. Weeds live the same way. See? But it's got to be the entire Word. Amen. To be the bride, you have to be part of Him. He is the Word. Amen. See? And what a part of Him is it? The Word that's promised for this day when He calls His bride. Amen. You're part of that. You get it? I don't, don't lose that now. <laughs> Notice. And He makes it a fit place to live through eternity. Notice. This is still not referred to, uh, uh, this millennium reign, the thousand years, is not the new earth. See? The millennium reign is a different reign. That's what we go into the millennium, but that isn't a new earth, a new heaven. No. That's just a rest place, see? a rest period. Not at all the new heavens and the new earth. For see, in the millennium, we have things that will not go into that. It's a type of the old seventh day out of Eden, the seventh day after he made the world. The seventh day he rested in Eden. And the millennium, see, the world has now almost 6,000 years old. See, in every 2,000 years, it's had a, a destruction. See, first 2,000, the flood came. And he baptized it with what? Water. Next 2,000, Jesus come to sanctify it and clean it, dropped his blood upon it, called it his. All right, I'll come again. <laughs> now, as king with his queen... And the second 2,000 years, what does he do? He comes and gives his rest spirit and then burns her off and claims it for his own. Puts his own back on it. And notice, not the perfect world, this millennium. It's a type of the seventh day. Then comes the white throne judgment. See, we still have judgment. We're still in time in the millennium. It's a day, 1,000 years. It's a time element. Not, don't get that mixed up with the new earth now because it's not. You must say this to me. I just, <laughs> somebody's, might say this to me, that uh, now, Brother Branham, what are you going to do now? You've run out of your complete sevens. What are you going to do now? Now you're a dispensationalist, which I am. I believe it. God is too. No, notice, you run out of dispensation types. For if you're going to put something beyond that seventh day, how are you going to get it? Where are you going to now? All right. I'll call your attention to something. <laughs> so I, I, I ain't out of dispensation yet. I got another scripture here. And remember, all of it has to be fulfilled. Amen. Every bit of it. See? I say, Brother Bram, you're trying to put something way over yonder beyond that seventh day. That seventh day Sabbath. As God made the earth and labored six days and rested the seventh is only a type of time. Time. But I've just said here, we become eternal. So where's your type now? You said you're a typologist, so you, you've run out of types now. No, I haven't. Let's just find out if we have. Let's go to Leviticus, back in the 23rd chapter of Leviticus. Now, I want you to notice in Leviticus, where we was at last Sunday, or last, this is what gave me the idea right here, the 23rd chapter of Leviticus and the 26th verse. Now, remember, there is seven feast days, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of of the tabernacles, the feast of the sheep waving, the, all this is seven great feast days that was only a type of the seven church ages. And you remember how many Sabbaths there was between one and the other? The seven Sabbaths between Pentecost and the trumpets, which was seven church ages. And there were seven feast days that represent the seven church ages. Keep your numbers running. Say, well, now, Brother Bram, you're done run out. You got your seven. All right, let's take the last feast, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, notice here in the 36th verse, Seven days shall you offer offerings made of fire unto the Lord. On the eighth day, on the eighth day shall be a holy convocation. There's another holy time coming. Holy convocation unto you, and you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And it is a solemn assembly, Amen. and you shall go do several work therein. Now we got an eighth day. 
Now, there's only seven days, but here we speak of the eighth day, holy conversation, uh, accommodation. Notice, do no work in it. The eighth day, or what? Back to the first day. What speaks of eternity is she rolls around without a stopping place. Amen. Do you see it? Notice, it was also upon this eighth day, last day, feast day of the tabernacle. Notice, after that, after the last feast day, after the last church age, after the last complete seven days upon the earth, after the millennium, that this holy convocation comes. Remember, this is Feast of Tabernacles. Tabernacles. Gathering places. Amen. 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 For in the millennium, the Bible said, they shall build houses. They shall have But in the new earth, he's already went and prepared the place. It's built. We have nothing to do with the building of it. Amen. Eternal. Oh, I just love that word. My. Amen. A holy convocation, the eighth day, which is only seven days, then on the eighth day, which comes back to the first day again, comes right back to the first day, the eighth day is a holy convocation. Notice, seven days only has to do with the old creation world time. Seven days, that's a millennium. The rest day is God labored six days, rest in the seventh, the church labors six days, and rest the seventh. But you're still in time element. I ain't speaking of the eternal. But you see, there's no such a thing as eight days. You go back to the first day again. See? The first day. The Sabbath speaks of the old law, which was to pass away. The keeping of a Sabbath. Which passed away, or I've said, a change to another. It didn't pass away. It just changed from the old law of keeping a certain day of the week. Isaiah, the 19th chapter, said... I'll be 28, 19. said, Precip, must put on precip here a little and there, a little hold fast that what's good. Or stammer lips and other tongues when I speak to this people. And here is the rest. See? You enter into life. Not keeping a day or shadow. Paul said over there in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, you keep days and shadows and things like that. I'm scared of your experience. See? We don't pass into certain days and orders. You pass from death unto eternal life. Amen. Not days and times, you pass into eternity. That's the holy conv- conversation, convocation, rather. Seven days, what? Which pass away, or I have said will change to another. Eight days deals with new creation. See, not old creation. Eight days is new creation. For it was on the eighth day that our Lord raised from the dead. There's your other convocation. The holiness, not considered in the Sabbaths at all, or the Feast of the Tabernacles, Feast of this, the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus raised from the dead for our justification on the eighth day, after the seven Sabbaths, or seven days, seven church ages, Jesus raised from the dead. Eighth day, which is a holy convocation, see, which is the first day. See, who's done passed through time and dropped into eternity again. <laughs> Not keeping a days and keeping of Sabbaths and new moons and things like that, but have passed. Changed your form. Not annihilated. Glory. But pass from death unto life eternal. Oh, what the Bible does teach us. See. Pass from one to another. All right. Pass the old Sabbath pass. Jesus raised on the eighth day. That was a solemn day. Holy. And it wasn't a day because day of time had done run out. It passed into eternity. So he swung right back to the first day again. See? Eternity is like a, a ring. You can't find no corner to it. You can't find no stopping place in a perfect circle. You go on and on. I don't care how far you go. You're still going. You start going around like this. Go through the floor. Go through the earth. Go beyond the earth. You're still going. All things that was created down here are perverted, not created. By Satan will drop out when the great golden bell rings and a trumpet sounds. And back down at the beginning where the tie post is made in Eden, 
when man came to the earth and he fell, a little lamb shed its blood. The spoke of the great lamb was coming to shed its blood. Calvary raised the cross that tied for the Old Testament to them who justified looked for it. And in this new dispensation, at the coming of the Lord, at the new earth, the rope of salvation, the blood, the redeemed power that I'm talking about, that through the same system has redeemed both man and the earth, will raise right up into eternity again. And the lake of fire will consume everything that's ungodly and unpredestinated to it. Do you see it? Notice. The eighth day Jesus raised for our justification. The eternal king with the eternal kingdom to be baptized into to eternal life. Not seven days had nothing to do with any of the days. It's speaking of another eternal coming. Speaking of an eternal time. The world I'm speaking of. And notice, after 50 days or seven Sabbaths, from there again, there come another holy convocation. What happened? The Holy Ghost fell on the day of Pentecost on the seventh day. Or the eighth day, rather. Eighth day. Fell on the eighth day was seven Sabbaths later. Exactly after his resurrection. See, so it'd be seven times that again, bring it right back around to the first day of the week again. <laughs> exactly. See, there's your holy convocation. Amen. Not having anything to do with the literal things. It's beyond that. Amen. It's into the kingdom of God with eternal life. Amen. With the predestinated that never did start. Amen. That never started on any day. You wasn't saved on any day. Amen. You was always saved. Amen. Jesus just come to redeem that. Amen. But you were saved from the beginning because you had eternal life to begin with. A trout fish can never be a gar or a tadpole. He might be in the same water with him, but he was from the beginning a trout. The men only caught him. See? But he was that from the beginning. There's that. Now we're not out of dispensations, are we? We're right into the Scripture. Fifty days later it comes. See, eight cannot be counted with the week. See, it cannot be counted eight days in a week. You can't do it. See, because it's only seven days in a week. Count any way you want to. Sunday's the first day of the week. See, you count seven, then you're going to go back in and start over again. Count seven, come back and go over again. See, and we live through all these types in here, but when you hit the eighth, you go on into eternity. Amen. You don't come by laws and rituals and orders. You come by predestination. <laughs> There's a genuine holy old vocation. See, and we're ending the seventh church age. Amen. Church age. Amen. The Pentecostal age. Right. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. We're entering that holy voc convocation. We are entering into that real genuine eternity. Amen. Where the church is called not to some station, some denomination, but into eternity with their eternal king. Amen. We don't have it at all. No such a thing as days and things and times. You're passed into eternity. Where you come from? You was there to begin with. If you got eternal life, there's only one form. That's God. And you are an expressed attribute. See? If, you, if you're not, you're not going to be there anyhow. No man can come to me except my Father has drawn him. See? which passes away all these old things, but these things don't. So it speaks of eternity. The Holy Ghost is eternal. Then you are in eternity where you was all the time, but you've just recognized what happened. See, you were made for an eternal purpose because you was a, the manifestation of an attribute that was in God that thought of you and expressed you. And he made the earth to take you out of and to make you a human being. And sin come along and perverted his way. You come anyhow. But you was lost with the world. So he come and redeemed you, the expressed attribute, and also redeems his earth by the same way. Then his purpose rolls on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, that does me so much good. Think of just what lays ahead. Now, in Ephesians 1.10, it's called, if you put it down, Ephesians 1.10, it's called not a dispensation, not the seventh day. It's called the fullness of time. And when the fullness of time has come, that's when time has been fulfilled. When there is no more time, then you go into eternity. After the seventh church age is over, and it is, Luther's age is over, Methodist age is over, Pentecostal age is over, and now you go into what? Eternity. No more seven. No more threes, no more there in eternity where there is no such time as numbers and times and things. Amen. Oh, my. You see it? Now, or after time has been fulfilled, all sin is gone, taken away at the millennium at the great white throne judgment, a type of the Holy Ghost. After the world is on fire and baptized its baptism of holy fire from heaven, all sin is gone, all germs is gone, all devils is gone, all temptations is gone, all evil is gone. Type now, then what does God do? He can set up on the earth. See? Because all sin's gone. That's the same thing He does when He gives you the Holy Ghost baptism with fire. He can come and dwell with you and we can sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus because we are already in Him. Now we will be, we are. Now, Setting in Christ Jesus. How do we get into it? By one Holy Ghost baptism. By one Spirit we're all baptized into Christ, which we are now, won't be in Christ, we are. He is the great spiritual king over the Spirit that's in us because we were in him at the beginning. See, God in the beginning, when he thought of you and thought of others like that, thought of himself of being tangible. That was his thoughts. See? So he expressed his thoughts by word. He said, let there be, let there be, and there was, let there be, and there was. Then that's why he kept saying, let there be, to the people said one day, don't let God speak. He said, I'll speak to him through a prophet. See? From this on, I'll speak to him through a prophet. And the prophet said, there shall come, there will be, and it was, and it was, and it was, and it was. See? Just like that. You get it now? The fullness of time has come. After time has been fulfilled, sin is gone. After the world's baptism, after the world's baptism makes it a fit place. No sickness, no germs, no thorns, no thistles, no death, no sorrow, no heartaches, no old age, nothing to represent death, nothing wrong, all right, nothing natural, eternal. Then his attribute is expressed because it was there first to begin with. That's what he thought. And then what happened? He set Adam and Eve here on the earth and said, Multiply now and replenish the earth. The bodies was all laid out here for you to eat, make your body. That's the way you had of doing it. But sin come along and interrupted his plan. She rolls right on this the same time does. But what did Jesus do? God came down and expressed himself in the form of a man, a human being, gave his life instead of staying here, which he was a king. But he gave himself to redeem the rest. You get it? Amen. And when it's all over, then it's pulled right back and God's purpose is fulfilled. There's an eternal king again with his eternal subjects expressed in human flesh. Amen. Exactly the way he had it. Sin's tuck away. The devil's gone. It's all right. Now what we're good? This earth could be a place for heaven to set now. Look at it, the sin. It'll have to be cleansed. No man, no person, no woman, boy, girl, I don't care who he is is fit to go in the pulpit or even claim to be a, a Christian without being filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. You have no right to the Lord's Supper, any communion, feet wash, or anything right. until you've been cleansed by the holy fire of God. Amen. No man has a right to preach unless he like Moses, meets him out there on that sacred ground, that pillar of fire hanging there where he knows where he's at. See? Notice how, how we go. After the world's fire of baptism, all germs is gone, makes it a fit place then. For heaven to dwell here on earth. Type now of sitting in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Passed from this dirty like the little woman was into the expressed attribute of God. Now we are the sons of God. Not we will be. 
We're the attributes of God's thinking. Now you say, well, look at this priest. Wasn't he a son of God? He proved he wasn't. He couldn't recognize what? Did he say, I believe the Bible? Sure. But he couldn't recognize the express word of the hour. He only had an intellectual learning from some group that had been back before him. It's the same thing today. I know that's strong, but it's the truth. There was the word. It's spoken exactly for that day, and he, yet he was a scholar. Yet he was a renowned person, but he could not recognize it. Why? No matter how scholarly he was, anything like that, he still didn't have representation of predestination. See? Only the predestinated will only be the one that does it. Only can be. And you only can do it because, look, it proves predestination. Because if you've got eternal life, you had to be a part of God all times because he's the only one that's eternal. You see it? Oh, my. Think of it. Now watch what happens to the great millennium. Seeing all gone. Millennium now set in. It's time now the Holy Spirit takes its place, just like it does in us. Passes from death unto life. Dwelling in the heavenly places in Christ, in his glorious presence, even physical death will pass away then. Just as spiritual death has passed away now. There is no such a thing as spiritual death now. To, to a, a baptized saint of God. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Amen. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. All Scripture it must be fulfilled. You can't die. You've got eternal life. Only thing the Redeemer has made you recognize it, and you were always that. And that's the reason you see the day you're living in. How many sees it? Raise your hand. See? Thank you. See, the day that we're living in, you recognize it. Now, the Methodist said, when you shout, you got it. A lot of them shouted and didn't have it. The Pentecost said, when you speak in tongues, you got it. Many speak in tongues didn't have it. Look how all kind of forms those Pharisees had. But when the Word was made manifest, they didn't recognize it. See? And if you are the bride, the bride is a part of the husband. And if the only place that you'll ever recognize it is recognize what part of that husband that word you are, or you can't recognize being the bride. How many sees that? See? You have to recognize your position. You can't recognize somebody else's. What if, what if Moses would have come with Noah's message and Noah was a part of it? But it wouldn't have worked. What if, 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 uh, if Jesus would have come with Moses' message? Wouldn't have worked. It was a different age. It's a different prophecy. A different part of the Word had to be fulfilled there. They was in another day of the week. Right. Not Tuesday's work can't be done on Wednesday. Wednesday's got to be done on Wednesday. Right. See? Right. Saturday has to be Saturday's work. Right. See? And they, they was recognized, oh, Moses, we have Moses. He said, if you didn't know Moses, you'd know me. Right. For he is the one who spoke of me. Yeah. The Lord your God shall raise a prophet like unto me. Amen. Get the idea? Right. Oh, my. See, then Jesus said in John 14, when he, the Holy Ghost, has come, he will bring these things to your memory. Amen. See, show you what day you're living in. And then another thing you'll know him by, he'll show you things to come. Amen. Huh? Amen. See, right back to the prophetic again Amen. when he's come. See? In the new earth, the new heavens, will never be blackened again when this new earth is to come. The devil will be bound. Satan, he's still loose now. He's accuser. But in the new earth, he will be bound and cast into the lake of fire, in this holy fire. Then in this new earth, let's look at it for a few minutes now. In this new earth, the skies will never be black again. No, that's from the curse. Never be black again with angry clouds. Winds will never blow across her again like that. No, she'll never tear up the trees and tear up the houses and turn over the things. Lightning and the wrath will never blouse from Satan across there and kill a man walking down the road or burn up a building. No, no more. There'll be no more typhoons that sweep down or storms and tornadoes and tear up houses and kill little children and things. Uh-uh. Won't be no more. Trying to destroy. It won't be there. Satan is cast out. Wish we had time. I'm just passing scriptures now, so we won't be too late. i got to pray for the sick. Heavens and earth have met. 
God and man is reconciled. A restored Eden has begun. All the curse is gone. Just like all the curse of sin is gone when the Holy Ghost accepts you. See? You don't accept it, it accepts you. Because it's God's attribute. See, if it's the Holy Ghost, it means God's Spirit. And it's the attribute, the thought of God has accepted you because that, you were ordained for that purpose. See, yet you was born in sin, but God had that attribute, and here you express yourself here on earth, and he comes down and gets you. See, you're back here. Here's where you belong. See? See? Sin's lost its power. Amen. Mm. That's right. The desire of sin's done gone from your heart when the Holy Spirit comes in. You are a restored person. And then when the earth is restored by the same thing, there can be no more cursing, no more storms, no more winds, no more typhoons, typhoons, rather. You're reconciled. Man and God has met. The new earth will be put on its Eden beauty again. The new earth will spread forth her at your baptism of fire. Just think, she'll catch a fire and burn up. The elements will burn with, with fervent heat. All the works in the earth will burn. All the water will explode. It will ignite and blow all. Everything will blow up. Volcanics will erupt and thousands of miles in the air will fly, burning hot lava. Every germ, the Holy Spirit of God will cleanse off every speck of all the sin and everything. All the devil will be bound and cast into the lake of fire, consuming fire, God's wrath of fire. No beast will be there to destroy you again. When you walk down the road in the flower gardens, there'll not be any serpent there to hiss at you and bite you with his paws and phantom. Oh, my. Won't that be wonderful? Listen, there'll be none of that new earth ever mounted up to a little yellow sod bank for a grave. Be none of them there. Man and God has come together, bride and bridegroom. Heavens and earth has embraced each other. God has come down to dwell among man. His tabernacles with them. There'll be no more sin, no more sorrow. Never there will be a tear drop off of a mother's cheek over her baby. Amen. It won't be on that new ground. No, it's redeemed. It belongs to Him and for His that was redeemed out of it. See? Look, you are part of that ground. Is that right? And when He redeems you, He redeemed the earth with the same thing and you are together again. Oh, how much plainer can it be, see? You have to be redeemed because you're part of it. If the blood didn't drop on you, you ain't redeemed yet. You're not called. Then he cleanses it. That's the same thing he does with fire. Even the blood drop, it's yet got to be cleansed by fire. Right? For a dwelling place for God. God already took up his abode. Potentially, the kingdom of God is in the earth now, in the hearts of his saints. It's his attributes that he began and again. Now his attributes is redeemed. What's he waiting? To redeem the earth. To set his attributes on it to fulfill exactly his predestinated plan. Do you see it? Notice, no graves, no teardrops, never, no more blood shed. She'll never be moistened by a teardrop or a blood. No, be no more wars. No, no clouds of winter, no cold snow upon the rest of her. Won't lay there no more on it. The hot sun will not never burn its grass. Hallelujah. Even the desert shall bring forth roses. <laughs> that old sticky desert will blossom one day like a rose. God said so. When she's redeemed, when she takes her fire baptism, there's all kinds of cactuses and stickers and everything there now, but she's got a fire baptism coming. Like the man was when he still had hatred, malice, and strife in him, and the fire baptism come, it cleaned it off. No more jealousy, no more nothing. It's just absolutely a dwelling place for God. And remember, that's his delegation. Let's go to meet him over yonder. <laughs> oh, what? That's not just a story. That's the truth. That's what God said. That's what He's promised. That's what the bride goes to. Even the desert, He said, shall blossom. Be a rose. Satan, sin, and sinners has gone for it ever. It's all done, blended into eternity, and all that was perverted. That great archangel that sat there one day, Satan, that did all this evil, will be destroyed. Remember the Bible said, if that soul won't do as he did, said do, he will even destroy that soul. But you see, he can't destroy himself and remain God. 
So if that soul is of the world, it has to be destroyed. But if it's eternal with God, it never did begin because it's part of God. It can never be destroyed. What a beautiful, how, how thankful that the church ought to see that. Yes. People, all you've done lays right here. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm omitting some of it because I want to get back to it again. Even these things, Satan, sinners are gone for eternity. Never no more to be all. See, Satan cannot create. If he is, he's God. That's right. okay? He can only pervert what has been created. Right. Okay? Right. And all perversion will, perverting will be done away with. Right. And death is a perverting of life. And when the perversion is done, there can be no more death. Amen. Old age is a sign of death. Right. And when old age has gone away, life comes in. Amen. All perversion, signs, and everything else is gone. Amen. Thorns and thistles is a sign of sin. The earth will be cursed with them, and when they're done away with, sickness come by that, it'll be done away with. Amen. Death will be done away with. Amen. Bloodshed will be done away with. Amen. Nothing will ever touch that side but holiness. Amen. The redeemed... Oh, my. Yeah, oh, I just feel so good. God and His creation and His creatures of this creation is redeemed by His own blood, cleansed by His own cleansing process, His germ-killing, sin-killing process. Like if anything is sterilized. The best sterilization we've ever had has been fire. You can take anything and wash it with soap suds and all these chemicals that they talk about. It still ain't free, but you burn it once. Amen. And when the holy fire of God sterilizes the earth with the chemicals, he's lifted his bride, which can come into heaven with him, while this is going on, and comes back upon the earth again. New heavens and a new earth. The cold winter can't hurt it. The hot summers can't hurt it. The deserts will blossom as a rose. Sin and sinners are gone. God and His creatures and creation is dwelling together in perfect harmony. As the heavens and the earth is husband and wife, so is Christ and the church. And they all meet in one big glorious plan of redemption and is brought right into the bosoms of God again. You see it? And in the new earth, there is a new city. Oh my. Now listen close. Don't forget this. That Jesus said in John 14, he would go to prepare. Let not your hearts be troubled when he's going away. I have a reason to go away. You believed in God. He said, believe also in me. They couldn't see that he was God. He said, you believed in God. Now you believe in me. And I'm going to prepare a place for you in my Father's house, as many mansions. In my Father's kingdom is many palaces. Christ is there under the construction of this new Jerusalem now. Now listen close. Don't, move, don't, don't miss this. Christ is in heaven today preparing the new Jerusalem just as God created the earth in six days, made the earth in six days, Christ, or 6,000 years. They said, be not ignorant. We read in the scripture, 1,000 years is one day. And Christ has gone and is preparing a place that's been on its construction for many, many thousands of years, preparing a place. And if I go and prepare a place, I will come again and receive you. Amen. That wherever I am, there you may be also. Amen. Notice the Redeemer and the redeemed. Amen. Wish we had time now. I got Marcher Solomon courting this girl. The bride. Oh, we just have to omit it. It's getting too late. I'll get it again. When he tries to get her, but she's engaged to a shepherd boy. Some people thought that was a song he sang. Oh, no. Solomon was the throne uh, inherit of David on earth, but showed that kingdom had to pass away. It was a type of Christ in love with the bride. See? Notice that Jesus said, John 14 now, go and prepare a place. Oh, what will it look like? Did you ever think now, bride, what it will look like? 
It is prepared and designed by the divine architect. What will that city look like? Now, we're going to talk about it for a few minutes. The divine architect has prepared it, designed it. And look, he's designed it with tender hands for his beloved bride. What's he going to look like? Could you imagine a man marrying a wife that's able? How he builds and puts every little thing just exactly to her touch. Just what she'd like. Amen. Now the divine architect has designed the new city where he will live with his bride just to her touch. No wonder the apostle said, Eye has not seen, ear has not heard, but neither has ever entered the heart of man. Let's see if we can probe into it just for a moment. See what it's going to look like. The divine architect has designed this for his beloved. See? Oh, what a place it must be when divine nature, a divine architect, has a design it for a divine attribute that's been divinely predestinated by a divine God who is the author of divine life. What will that city look like? Think of it. Remember, it's not heaven. John say, I saw it coming down out of heaven. It's to be on earth. See? Not this earth's going to pass away. It's a redeemed earth. God didn't say he's going to raise up a new generation. He's going to redeem the one that's here. He's going to raise up a new generation. He redeems the one that's already here. He ain't going to make no new world. It's just right here. He's just going to burn it off. Cleanse it like he did you. His plans must forever remain. Now, look. It's going to be, remember, it's going not to be heaven. It comes down from heaven. It's a dwelling place, a place to dwell in, to take up his abode. Like um, it was the, uh, John on the Isle of Patmos here in Revelation 21, he saw it descending. John saw the city descending from heaven like a dove, like he's seen. Here come God down upon his earthly tabernacle, Jesus, in the, descending out of heaven. Jesus was baptized straight straightway when he met the prophet. The word comes to the prophet, and he was the word. And the prophet is standing there denying all their denominations and everything. And when he seen the word, the word come right to him. And the prophet was so shocked. He said, I have need to be baptized of thee. Why come to me? He said, suffer to be so. For thus it is becoming to us. We know the message. To fulfill all rights, I am the sacrifice that must be washed. He suffered him. When he went up out of the water, he said, I saw heavens open. The prophet saw it. He saw the heavens open, and here come descending out of heaven a form of a dove and a voice saying, This is my part of the earth that I have redeemed, and from this part of the earth I will redeem the rest of it. For he is my word made manifest, and the whole world I spoke it into existence by my word, Hebrews 11. And Satan's held it all this time, but I've come to redeem it. So much of it has made his body, and I'm coming to dwell in it. John said, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending out of heaven as a bride adored for her husband. And where did it settle on? Just exactly like it did on there, up on the earth. Jesus was part of that earth that the Holy Ghost descended upon. Is that right? And remained upon him forever. It never can leave him. It's always that he and God are one. Always has to remain. And so John saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, descending like a comet or a, a dove coming down out of heaven and settling up on a redeemed entire earth. Amen. To do what? To claim every attribute Amen. that he made there for. Every man that was represented in the eternity and every woman is redeemed. Amen. She's been scoured and burned by fire. Jesus and his fiery temptations in the wilderness for 40 days. After that, notice it was ready for his ministry then. Think of it. The Holy Ghost descending up on earth. Jesus. And that holy blood. Now watch. I hope I don't go too deep for you. The holy blood that was created by God. The blood. The life. The creation of God. Jesus was the beginning of the creation of God. 
That's it. God made in creation. He was spirit. The Bible said he's the beginning of the creation of God. How did it begin? In the wombs of a woman. Which is why the woman is not like how them blind people can't see the serpent seed right here. See? Eve was put here on the earth, and before Satan ever touched her or anything else, God said to him, multiply and replenish the earth. Right. But Satan comes in here. And if that was Adam's son, then were Adam was a direct descent from God. And you only take the nature of your parent. And when you're born again, you take the nature of your parent of heaven. And your parent of heaven is the attribute of the Word. Or the Word is the attribute of your parent. And how can you deny it for denomination? Amen. Ah, I, I hope you don't miss it. I know it's from God. <laughs> Jesus. Here he comes descending. And there was Jesus, the attribute of God. Now the woman, she, watch. God said, because it did this, said, I'll put enmity between your seed and the serpent seed. Is that right? right. And the woman don't have any seed. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. You ever think of that? Right. She has a field. Right. Not a seed. See, the serpent had already placed his seed there. Yes. Then if the woman doesn't have a seed... She has to remain to have a seed. And see, through the sexual intercourse here, had brought from Satan the serpent, which was not a reptile. Had legs. because His legs went off of him. He's the most subtle, the only beast that would, would coordinate with the woman. A beast seed won't do it now. And nothing else. They tried it. It won't work. See, the seed life of a male won't go into a female woman. It won't do it. But that was the closest thing. See, they can't find that species between a chimpanzee and a man. See, each one, as it's evoluted up from the birds and on up to monkeys and so forth, up to Japan, see, then there's a loss. That was a serpent. Not a snake. Every farm is lost from him because he was cursed. Now, God didn't curse Adam. He might have done the same thing, but he cursed the earth, thorns and thistles. He didn't curse Eve, but said Adam would be her ruler. From now on, she ain't trying to preach or anything. Adam is her ruler. Amen. And all the days of your life, and in sorrow, and you'll bring your life into the earth. But he said, I'll put enmity between your seed. Now, she didn't have any seed. She never did have. So she had to receive a seed from some way. God gave her seed, not by sexual intercourse, but by creation. Can't you blind people see that's the seed of the serpent? Oh, my! Satan got there before Adam. That was the seed, but she received a seed. What was it? God himself. He was the beginning of the creation of God. Now look, when Seth was born, or Abel, he was a just man from his father. Seth's the same way. Where did that evil fellow come from? Murderer, liar. See? See where it come from? It had to be a seed because he was a seed. King was a man. Oh, where's that blind people at? God of this world is blind. Well, no wonder Jesus said no man can see it. See? You say, why don't they see it? Jesus said one time to his disciple, it's given to you to know the kingdom of God, but not to them. That's the reason you come from 1,500 miles square. See? It's given to you to know the kingdom. Look, fellas, come to you from South Africa and around. This late hour when the bride is made up to go into the kingdom. I just don't have enough time. Notice Watch now. See? Now, can you see the serpent seed there? See how it done? It's perfect. See? Now, some of them said, now, like that guy in Tucson the other day trying to, uh, he may listen to this tape. But if it is, man, I want to tell you something. When he said, Eve said, here's where they go to, I've gotten a son from the Lord or a man from the Lord. Well, certainly. God has a law. Look. You take a seed and plant it out here in a field where it's sweet, and you plant briars out there. I don't care. The same sun and the same rain brings that seed to life. God has a law. And that law cannot be broken. I don't care if, a, if a, the honorous woman in the town, the honorous man, and unmarried and everything, would have a, an, an affair and live together and bring forth a child. That child would have to come by the law of God. Because you know the way, if you don't, you make Satan a creator, then he's a God. Oh, how blind can you be? 
God's law. Certainly, if you ever got a baby, I don't care if it was Esau, Jacob, whoever it was, or any ill-famed person, it was Judas that had to come by God. God has the law. The Bible said the sun shines on the just and the unjust. The rain falls on the just. Now, Hebrews, the sixth chapter, and uh, it says that uh, the rain cometh off upon the earth to water it and prepare it for what's dressed, you know, to make living. But thorns, but thorns and thistles live by the same water, same sunshine. For it's the law of God to ripen every seed, to make every seed produce itself. So it had to produce the serpent seed. And it never hindered God. It fulfilled His complete plan. It made Him a Redeemer. Any blind would almost see that, unless it's hid. The God of the world is hid it from. It's just as plain as anything you can see. There you are. There's your serpent seed. Now notice, but Jesus was the beginning of the creation of God. Now what does a woman do when the germ comes from the male sex? I deny that. The woman has no life in her at all. She only has a little egg, which is a field out here. Like you took a field and disc it all up and. And pro, put a spray on it and sprayed all the germs out of it, and not, not even grass or nothing could grow in it. And then you fertilize again, sow some good seed in there. If the enemy comes and sows some other seed, the same law of God will ripen both seeds. Well, God wasn't intended for that to be, see? But what happened? See, the sperm from the male carries the hemoglobin, which is the blood. In the blood is the life. And if you ever, I've watched it in high breeding cattle and things like that, Brother Shakari and I. Taking it through into the doctors and so forth, watching how it goes in a chemist. See? And then here comes a sperm from the female, which is a bunch of eggs. Here comes a sperm from the male, which is a bunch of germs. This hasn't got a bit of germ in it. It's only a byproduct of the man. That's how she got here in the first place. And she's only a field. There's an egg. It's got the fertile ground for this life. And this life moves in and crawls. There's a mystery how that maybe you say, well, the first one meets, the rest of them dies. Well, how, who determines it? Well, the first one. Will it be the one in front, the first egg in front, and the first germ? No, no. It might be a one egg come back in the back in the middle of the sperm will come up a germ and go meet it. Shows that some intelligence determines where it's going to be red-headed, black-headed, where it's going to be a little big male or female. Hey, you, can't, you can't do nothing else about it. It won't work. You can mix them together and everything. It won't make a bit of difference. God determines it. And after a while, one little germ will crawl into that field, egg. What they have the little tail like on it, twisting around, drops off, and there starts the spine of the baby. What is she then? She has no seed. She has a field to receive the seed. Amen. <laughs> so the seed, the enemy went forth while the good sower went forth sowing good seed, and the enemy come behind him sowing corrupt seed. But the rain falls on the just and the unjust. The sun, it all has to grow. Jesus said, let them grow together. At that day, They'll be bundled, the terriers. And they're bundling now, and big organizations going to the big bundle. World Council of Churches. And what's the end is to be burned. But the grain's to be taken to the garner. See? Where they both live by the same thing, the same water, the same rain. A citrus tree, that's a that's an orange tree, will will have to will bring forth on it, if it's grafted into it, a pomegranate. It'll bring forth a lemon. It'll bring forth a grapefruit. See? But it won't be an orange, but it's living off the same life that the orange tree is producing. The denominations have been injected into the vine because if they claim Christians, they live by it. Okay, Ephesus was, you know what he was, and yet he even prophesied. See, they live by it. Oh, I wish we could have a week and we could just study this thing out and make it so clear you, you can't miss seeing it. Now, I'm going to admit some of these things. Now, watch. Look, them hands designed this for his beloved and bride. Designs and tenderly love for his bride. Remember that the Holy Ghost descended on Jesus, which Jesus was a part of the earth. Why? The germ of God, the life of God, was designed in the womb of a woman. Is that right? Which was the earth. All right? And then the life of God came in, so he was the beginning of the creation of God. See? And then that blood of God that was that by that germ, when it was shed at Calvary, dropped back upon the earth. What for? To redeem the earth. Now it's been justified. It's been sanctified, called and claimed, and now it's to receive its baptism of fire and be cleansed for Jesus and his bride. Amen. And you are these other parts that's drawn out of this earth. The earth. 
You're a part of the earth, your body. Your soul is part of God, an attribute of God. Displayed here on earth in a body. The body's to be redeemed, now the soul's redeemed, because it was in sin. So God come down by a process of justification, sanctification, baptism of the Holy Ghost, and redeemed your soul. And you being part of the earth, it's redeemed by it. You're in the process now. It's growing on. Your body was justified under Noah's baptism. <laughs> Amen. And your flesh, when it dropped upon there, and the earth is to be cleansed by fire, the place where you live with the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a dwelling place for Christ and his bride, the new Jerusalem. Watch this city. Earth. Take up its abode on earth. Now you can plainly see, as I said, the, this change. The earth must be changed. It cannot have it like this. The church could not go, right, the world could not go right on at the millennium without being changed. See? To have such a place in it, it'll have to be changed. Just like uh, we must be changed by His holy fire to condition and make a place for Him to be contained within us, that is, the Holy Ghost. Notice now, there'll be plenty of room in the new earth. Uh -huh. See? Plenty of room. It'll be renovated. That's true by far. But there'll be no more sea. Notice. The city is 1,500 miles square. Now listen real close while we draw these dimensions. I want to race the blackboard just a moment. Here's a deep revelation from God. None of these other, I'll bring the rest of this up, the Lord willing. Notice. Now the earth is, well, you turn over into the book of Revelations, you can see how he measured it by the cupids and by the furlongs, 2,300. So now we find out that uh, the city is measured 1,500 miles square. You know how far that would reach? I measured it off this week. It would reach from Maine to Florida. And from the eastern seaboard to 600 miles of pass west of the Mississippi. In other words, half of the United States, just for the city. You say, there ain't no room. When the sea's gone, there will be. Because pretty four-fifths of it's in water. Isn't that right? The explosion dries up the sea. Erupts the earth. Oh, my. Remember, 1,500 miles square. What a city. And, but remember, the sea's gone, and the breadth and the height are the same. That would make it 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles, the length by the breadth by the height. 1,500 miles. Think of it. Transparent gold. Amen. And the city had a wall around it. Now, now that doesn't necessarily mean by being equal. It said in the walls and the foundation were equal. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's a cube or square. There is another geographical measure that the dimensions are the same. That is a pyramid. Four square, light, four square. And the walls are the same. Let me draw it. Amen. See? Length, breadth, height. Amen. 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 We're going to get into something as sure as the world. Notice the dimensions of this angle is exactly the same, all of them. Length by the, uh, by the height. There's another measure, the pyramid that proves it. This being this away would answer exactly Enoch's sign in Egypt, the pyramid. Would it? Enoch, before the Antiluvian destruction, when justification was coming in, he brought forth a sign. And in this pyramid is seven steps going to the king's chamber. What's on the seventh step? If you ever study the dimensions of the pyramid, what comes out to take the oncomer to introduce to the king? What's your station at is standing there? And you'll see the day you're living in the pyramid. Now, God made three Bibles. Now, there's a pyramid teaching. It's nonsense. But there's a genuine pyramid. See? Notice. 
Now, God's first Bible, he made three. They have to be everything in a three. Jesus comes three times. Come once to redeem his bride, next time to get his bride, next time with his bride. See? Now, notice how beautiful. See? And in this pyramid was seven steps, and then the king's chamber. And we're in the seventh church age before the king takes his throne. And remember, the pyramid never did have a capstone on it. God's first Bible was in the skies, the zodiac. It starts off and runs every age. The first beginning of the zodiac is the virgin. That's how he come first. The last figure in the zodiac is Leo the lion, the second coming. Just before there is a cross fishes, which is the cancer age that we're living in now. There was a pyramid. After that, Enoch, which testified exactly. We wouldn't have time to go into it, but someday, with God's help, I'll show you. Just exactly draws the dimension of the hour we're living. See? Notice. But this uh, geographical measure now that we have, whose dimensions are the same, doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be a, a cube. Notice. This would answer Egypt's, or the Enoch sign in Egypt. In the earth's time of purifying by its baptism of fire, there will be volcanic, such as this earth exploding, and will push up a pyramid-like mountain. See? Plenty of room to do it. This whole thing will be changed. The whole surface will be changed. You got it? Yep. It'll push up a pyramid-like mountain. This would exactly be with the Word. If it doesn't, which it will. Now notice, for in Isaiah 65, 25, where we just read, he said, They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, saith the Lord. Oh. All my holy mountain. Remember, it's always a mountain. If the walls were straight up and down, the city could only be seen from the outside, or from the inside. The throne can only be seen from the inside. But notice. It would be seen only from the inside, but now we see the promise of Isaiah 4, 5. Let's just read it. Are you in a hurry? No. Don't, don't be in a hurry now. We, we, we have two, two particular things now, too much, too much of a, a time that you must understand right here, because I want to make this clear, and then when we get back to it again, I'll, I'll show you then where we're, where we're talking about, but when our next study on this at another time. Oh, praise the Lord Jesus. Watch here how the words cannot fail. Now watch here in Isaiah. I got it wrote down here if I can find it again just a minute. Isaiah 4 and 5. Now listen, he's talking of the coming of the Lord. How that women would be so immoral. Oh, he said seven women. Let's, let's just read it. Let's hear it. And in that day seven women shall take a hold of one man, saying, We'll eat our own bread, wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. That's the end time where we're living now. Marriage, divorce, and prostitution. What? In that day shall the branch of the Lord be beautiful and glorious. The fruit of the earth shall be excellent and comely. Them that escaped of Israel. How that you escaped all that damnation. See, and it shall come to pass that he that is left in Zion and he that's a remnant in Jerusalem shall, uh, let's see, in Jerusalem shall be called holy, even every one that is written among the living in Jerusalem. See, wherein the Lord shall have washed away the filth of the daughter of Zion. Remember, that's always the bride. See? And shall have purified the blood of Jerusalem. That's the remnant of the Jews plus the bride. See? And in the midst thereof, with the spirit of judgment. Ah! That's always God's judgment. When he makes his final judgment, calls you, justifies you, brings you to redemption, then his judgment breaks forth upon you. And the Holy Ghost and fire cleanses away the sin. Then you're his. Same thing he does to the earth when he purges it with fire and by the spirit of burning. Now look, listen, are you ready? And the Lord will create upon every dwelling place of Mount Zion and upon her assembly a cloud of smoke by day and a shining of fire by night. For upon all the glory shall be a defense. The Lord in that day upon the top of it shall create a fire of light to burn upon the day. And it goes ahead and says it'll be a shelter, a rest, a refuge. Notice. Making exactly the speaking of the Bible exactly. The walls are straight up and down. You couldn't see it. It has to lean. All my holy mountains, 
He'll create this light upon this mountain, and it shall be for our defense. Oh, we sang that song, Oh, that city of Mount Zion. As a pilgrim, yet I love it still. Now, yet through those ages, when I reached that city on the hill, see? Notice, Mount Sinai was where God descended on top of it when he spoke to Israel in a pillar of fire. He descended on top of a mountain, Mount Sinai, on the Mount of Transfiguration. When he declared, This is my beloved Son, hear ye him, he descended in a pillar of light and shining brightness up on top of the mountain before Peter, James, and John. And in there he was represented with both Moses and Elijah, the translated and the dead raised. <laughs> Glory! The new city and the new earth, the new creation, the city on the hill with the throne in the top of it, the throne up here in the top, and the dwellers all up and down on this mountain, and the wall up around this had twelve foundations, and each one of them had the breast a stone was in Aaron, which represented the twelve tribes of Israel. And in the gate, they had four gates that just exactly like the temple in the wilderness, like the tent was in the wilderness. Notice each one had, had the apostles, three on each side, twelve apostles. Each, and it was 144 cubits high. 144 cubits is exactly 216 feet, making each one of those big stones almost 20 foot tall. The breastplate in that gate, making up that wall that was around the city. Now, if the city doesn't rest on top of the wall, because the city 1,500 miles cannot do that. It's the wall here that you enter in like the gates of the old Jerusalem. You enter through the wall into that, and each one of these had the 12 foundations. And each one had the amber and the different stones, which represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Amen. And the apostles, each over that big one solid pearl gate, set a name of an apostle. And didn't Jesus said, you'll sit on twelve thrones, yes. judging the twelve tribes of Israel? Amen. Who set at the gate to judge when they come into the city? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. There you are. The kings of the earth entering into the city Hallelujah. comes before the apostolic judge, Hallelujah. as Jesus promised. Oh, my. On this throne, on top of it, 1,500 miles high, the whole world will see the light of the world. Amen. Jesus sitting on the throne on top of the world, top of the church, Amen. top of Mount Zion, which is 1,500 miles half size in the United States, and raise his plumb up so you can see him the world over 1,500 miles high. And all up and down here will be the redeemed. There will be the houses of pure gold. There will be avenues and parks and gardens and the river of life coming trickling out from the throne and running down through little chasms and over the terraces. And the tree of life will be blooming in every yard and bear its fruit. Twelve times a year, change fruit every month. And the kings of the earth shall come into it and bring their honor. And the leaves are for the healing of the nation. When the kings are living in peace out there, when they go out, they'll pick a tree, a leaf off like that, like the dove come back, that the wrath of God had been settled and brought the holly leaf into the ark. So when the king leaves for bringing his glory into the bride's chamber here into the city, he'll hold a leaf to his neighbor king and we're in peace forevermore. <laughs> healing of the nation. It's all settled. One time we fought for one another's bloods, brother. And we cherished and hollered and shot and burnt to and everything. But now there's peace. Praise the Lord. Oh, the healing, not disease, healing is all done. Amen. Healing of the nation. Amen. 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 City with the throne and top. Revelation 21, 23. And they need no light. For the Lamb and the Lord God is the light thereof. Amen. See? The Lord God is that pillar of fire that followed the children of Israel through the wilderness. And He is ascended upon the throne in that perfect kingdom. 
would find the kingdom that Jesus is to surrender to the Father, that God might be all and in all. Jesus sets up on his throne here as our Joseph. Yes. And the king is that light that will be on top of Mount Zion. Amen. And his holy light will flood the entire city. Amen. Hallelujah! 1,500 miles high and 1,500 miles square with the paradises of God built all through that city. Streets, avenues. Read your Revelations 21. See if it isn't right. See. They need no light there, for the Lamb is the light. And on the throne can be seen setting 1,500 miles. Uh, it don't just run right straight up like this. It slants off like the pyramid. If it would be half of the distance, then that would be about run up like this, you see, from one city to the other. Now, if you'll notice, from one side of the city to the other. I could drop a little something here if you want me to. Did you notice a little group here? It's just about that part of circumference it covers. <laughs> Georgia, California to Saskatchewan. From Kansas to the rock-bound coast of Maine. That's what's gathered. That's why what's represented right here. About 1,500 miles square. Oh, they come from the east and west. They come from the land afar to feast with our king, to dine. What on? Man shall not live by bread alone, by bread, word, to dine as his guest. How blessed these pilgrims are. Even the world has to say, I've never seen people like that. Oh, beholding his hallowed face, a glow with light divine, less partakers of his grace as gems in his crown shall shine. Oh, Jesus is coming soon. Our troubles will then be o'er. Oh, what if our Lord this moment should come? It won't be long. Everything's perfectly geographically. Sodom, the messengers, everything's sitting just exactly right. What does it mean? This ain't coming to this one little tabernacle, 1,500 miles square, from the same dimension. Why is it God so fought and cared so much about that little place of Palestine? See? Well, it's just a little spot. But right in there is where the temple is set. That's where the New Jerusalem will break up right there. Olive, Mount of Olives shall cleave part to the right and left. Sure, when she pushes up from the beneath. Not that he says pushing apart like this, it's pushing up. And that day, when he stands his holy feet upon the mountain, notice, on his throne, 1,500 miles high. Remember, Satan tried to tempt him one time on top of a mountain. See? The new city has 12 foundations. It's read through 12 patriarchs, 144 cubits being the breastplate of Aaron. Twelve gates of pearl, twelve disciples' name. Jesus stand the headstone on the throne. When his saints has crowned him the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, and he's a headstone. I don't have my pocket book with me. But if you'll notice in your pocket book if you have a one dollar bill, they have the seal of the United States, an eagle on one end, a holding the spears, the uh, coat of arms, as it were. And on the other end, it's got the pyramid with an all-seen eye on top of it. See, they didn't know what they were doing. And on there, it's wrote in Latin, and you'll find out it says, it, this is the great seal. They didn't know what they were doing. Neither did Caiaphas know he was prophesying. There's the great seal. Here it is. Hallelujah. See? The city. It's not just a flat cube like this, see? But it leans up so it can be seen. Yes. And upon this holy mountain of the Lord, the Lord shall descend upon top of his mountain. Amen. Right. Here he is. That's the reason the capstone wasn't put on by Enoch. See? That's the reason the capstone has to come now. Hallelujah. And the mountain will be pushed up. And it'll be the mount of the Lord, and in here will dwell the redeemed. These avenues and big freeways, as it was. Where is the Lord? Parks. And the river of life will draw, run right through it. 
<laughs> and every house will be made of transparent gold. And the streets will be made of gold. And the trees of life will be there. And will bear twelve manners of fruit. And the kings and the honored man of the earth shall bring their honor and glory into the gate. And the gate shall not be shut by night because there is no night there. In that city where the Lamb is the light. In that city where there cometh no night. Have a mansion over there that's free from toil and care. Oh, I'm going where that lamb is the light. Don't you see the, the towns, the cities, the houses, the dwellings are, are speaking of that right now. All these natural things are a shadow. Take a shadow at a distance, like my pan. Before there can be a, a positive or a negative, there has to be a positive. And you see that shadow look like I got a dozen fingers. But then when you go to get it close together, it focuses down to one. And then the shadow fades into the hand. That's a lot of times people think there's three or four gods. You're looking too far back in the early Reformations. Hey, come on down now, you find focus into there's one. Amen. Exactly. There's one bride. Not a dozen denominations, but one bride. That's the elected out of, every, out of, the, out of the earth that's been predestinated to this. The ones who can recognize their place in the kingdom. On this throne, look, so high. The new city with the foundations, twelve gates, Jesus the headstone, the apostles judging the twelve tribes, the pyramid of Enoch casts no shadow, no time of the day. I've been in Egypt. It's a pyramid. It's so geographically fixed and in the dimensions of this uh, uh, great geometrical uh, figure that no matter where the sun is, there's never a shadow around the pyramid. See how it is? And there'll never be no night there. Him on top of the mountain floods it with his glory. His glory light will be there all the time. There will be no night there. Jesus the headstone. Now notice. So the redeemed shall walk in the light. We sing now we'll walk in the light, that beautiful light. There's something in us calling out. It's past from death and life. It's because that's waiting. See? That's what's the attribute, what we feel. Truly, this is, are you ready? This is the city that Abraham was looking for. Amen. Being a prophet, he knew that city was somewhere. The Bible said so. And he forsook the city he lived, and he went over. Look where he went. Exactly where it'll be. See? He was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. See, being a prophet... Jesus gone to prepare with the divine hands, a divine city, divine architect, for divine bought and people, for predestinated people. He's gone to prepare. Abraham was looking for it. And he professed that he was a pilgrim and a stranger. For he looked for a city whose builder and maker was God. That prophet, knowing it was somewhere, John saw it coming down. But Abraham thought it must be on earth right then. Why? He met Melchizedek, the king of it, and gave him a tithe, which had no father, no mother. He had no beginning of life or no ending of life. Abraham met him, and they took communion <laughs> right on the literal spot where the city will be raised up. The holy mountain of the Lord, where the redeemed will live. Oh, my. That time just don't stop. <laughs> no, we're in time. Wait a while, we go to eternity. Oh, holy mountain. There will be streets of transparent gold, avenues and houses and parks. You want to read this? Revelation 21, 18. The tree of life will be there. Twelve different manners of fruit. One each month will be born on it. The people who eat these fruits will change their diet every, every month. And it's is from for only the overcomers. Do you know that? It isn't for the denominations. You say, you mean that, Brother Brent? Let's turn to Revelation 2 just a minute. Fine. Revelation 2 and 7. Let's find out now where it's really the truth or not. Revelation 2 and 7 reads like this. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit... Now remember, he's not talking to the Jews now. This is the church, the Gentile. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the 
tree of life which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Overcomers only. And overcome the beast, overcome his mark. That's Catholicism, Protestantism, denominationalism. Who overcome the beast, his mark, the letter of his name, he'll have a right to the tree of life to enter into the gates where nothing that defiles can ever go in. See? Think of it. Now, just a minute now as we go just a little bit farther. Tree of life will be for the overcomers only. The leaves will be for the healing of the nation. That is, the kings that live in there bringing their honor in. When they bring their honor in and lay it before the throne of God, just like the outside, the ten, uh, eleven tribes brought in every one of them a tenth to Levi. See? When they bring their honor into the ble- from the blessed land in that, they'll reach from the tree of life. Break off a holly leaf or a tree of life leaf, and they'll walk out together. There's no more war. Everything's at peace. The leaves are memorial for the healings of the nation. The same tree, not like Adam. He, there was a tree of life in the Garden of Eden that he might have eaten from if he hadn't fell. That tree of life reminded him all the time that his, new, his youth was continually going on. See? Same with the nation. The leaves will be for the healing of the nation. Notice, not the sickness now. You'd have the same rights as Adam. like the le- dove with the holly leaf. It's all, each king taking a leaf. Notice, the river of life, perhaps many little streams making it up. Now, in this earth, I'm going to close just in a few minutes. In this earth, I'm just going to stop. That's how much more notes he's got. About, about 30 pages. In this, in this life, I have never seen nothing so quenching as to be in the mountains and find, as I preached on the other night, that stream bubbling up. It's life-giving resource. You'd be tired and thirsty. Fall down by a good stream, way down where germs can't go, way down hundreds of feet in the earth, is bubbling forth pure, genuine, life-giving water. We appreciate that. That's little. Now, the earth has its many streams with refreshing water. When you're thirsting and dying, you get a good cold drink from that, It'll, it'll help you to live. But look where this one comes from. From the throne. That's where it gets its life-giving resources. Comes from under the throne of God, where God sits. All of it, all of this earth, this earth here we live in now, everyone, whether it be Christian or pagan, has temples. You ever think of that? Churches. All of them. But this one doesn't have any. The Bible said, and there was no temple there. But the Lord God and the Lamb is the temple of it. The Lamb is the light. The Lamb is the temple. The Lamb is the throne. The Lamb is the life. He is that temple. See, all these temples have an object they're worshiping. But in this city, he is the object. Amen. He's with his people. Amen. His spirit light floods the pyramid city. Like Peter and John up on top of the mountain, the light covered the top of the mountain. And a boy spoke, said, this is my beloved son. In Revelation 21, 3 and 4, the tabernacle of God is with man. God has tabernacled in man. By redeeming him by these three processes. Now God is going to redeem the earth and tabernacle in the earth with his subjects of the earth, which he brought forth from the earth, and through sin it fell, but the he had to let it go on. But now he sent Jesus to redeem that fallen earth, which we are part of. Though not one hair of your head will perish. Jesus said so. He said, I'll raise it up again the last day. See? Why? You're part of the earth. You know, as I had the little joke about my wife telling me I lost my hair, I told her I hadn't lost one of them. See, where are they at? I said, where was where I got them? Everywhere there was a substance, wherever they are, they're waiting for me. That's right. I'll go to them one day. This old body wrinkling and falling, dwindling over his shoulders and aching and knees and, and uh, hoarse in the throat. That's all right. You got buried in the sea, but the trumpet will wait me. And she ready. Yes, sir. We're going to change one of these days. I'm part of this world that's redeemed. You're in the world, but nothing of the cosmos. You're in a different order. 
a redeemed order. Notice, the tabernacle of God will be with man. Notice, the former things has passed away. This, this thing has passed away. This means that heaven has come down to resident with man. Heaven and earth are embraced. Just exactly when the dove came upon part of the earth, which was Jesus, he was the dust of the earth. Man. God, coming from that one little life germ by creative power, and that blood that was in that, the life that was in that blood, ascended back to God, but the blood dripped up on the earth to claim it because of the blood that was brought through from the germ cell from Cain. Okay? Now he comes back with a creative power, just like he did Adam, creating Adam. Here's the second Adam. Amen. And through that breaking cell there, where sin, Cain broke that blood cell upon the just. See? Now this blood cell, because he killed Abel, but Abel was born sex. But this one wasn't born sex. It was a creation of God, the beginning of it. Amen. And it redeemed the earth and all of the calcium, potash, petroleum, cosmic light that you're made out of is redeemed. Not one hair shall be harmed. No, I'll raise it up again at the last day. Then what? God comes down to resident upon the earth, which he is a part of it, his own body. He raised it up for our justification. We're justified by believing that, accepting that. Notice, in types, Jesus becomes, uh, in the type, Jesus becomes man, God, are predestinated to take his place to redeem us, to make all these things possible. Notice, outside of its beautiful walls of this city. Now, have you got the city? See, it's a holy mount. Nothing shall hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, saith the Lord. The city is not a cube. It is a mountain. And the, the width by the breadth by the height are equal. Amen. See? 1,500 miles this way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles all the way around, and 1,500 miles high. Amen. So it's just a great mount, like the pyramid, and the city is on the mount. Amen. 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 Glory. Amen. There you are. There's the paradises of God, Amen. the light of the world, Thank you, Jesus. that perfect kingdom, not the seventh day, the eternal one, Amen. See? not the millennium, the new earth. Amen. See? While it's going through the millennium, it's going through its sanctifying process, but still must be burned, Amen. See? which the blood redeemed the people and shows this memorial that the price is paid that thousand years, but then it has to be cleansed by fire, just like you were, as delegates of this city, the delegation. So if you die, or if you live, what difference does it make? Amen. If he comes today, or it comes a hundred years, or a thousand years, I'll only rest until my change. But old man, old woman, don't you be discouraged. If you are a representation up here in this attribute of God, in God. If you, have, if you represent the earth, you can not, you're in the eternal. And if you've crossed from that seventh day into the eighth, you got into the eternal by the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're included in this. Now, if you're just trusting upon a sensation or jumping up and down, or I do this, I keep a seventh day, I don't eat meat and things like that, that's going to perish in Amen. Amen. But this is the eternal. Amen. This is the eternal. Right. The feast after the Feast of Tabernacles. The, the Feast of Tabernacles was the last feast, the seventh feast. We're worshiping now under the Feast of the Tabernacles, the seventh church age. In the millennium, we'll be under the Feast of Tabernacles again in the seventh day. But then after the seventh day, we have a holy convocation. Amen. Amen. Go back into the eternal. How? By the eternal one that came and redeemed us and taken us back. Let us recognize that we were a part of this. Now, how do you know you're a part? Because that the word of the hour, the promise of the day, what is it? A restoration back to the first day, the first, and he shall restore the hearts of the children back to the Father. 
bring in a restoration again of the Pentecostal genuine, not sensations, and will manifest the evening light, the same sun that showed in the morning light, as promised for the day. Hey, man, man, where are we, friends? Where are we? Just waiting now to get out of the way so Revelations 11 can be made to known to the Jews. That's right. The rapture coming. Watch. Outside the gates of the walls, spread across the new earth, nations will dwell in eternal peace. Oh, honored kings will bring their glory into it. No sin can be there. No more bob-haired women will enter that city. I'll guarantee you that. No more short wearing cigarette smoking. Whoremongers, whores, or liars, idolaters, whatever they was, won't enter that city. No, it'll all be over. Sin will be gone. Nothing to defile its holiness shall enter there. That's what he said. All has passed away forever. Look! Out in its fields and around its gates, the bear will be gentle, the wolf will be tame, and the lion shall lay down with the lamb, and the beast from the wild will be led by a child. I'll be changed for the creature that I am, with this death working in my mortal body. Old age sitting here, I'll be changed. You've heard the song? The bear will be gentle, the wolf will be tame. He'll not jump up and rear up and try to kill you. He'll walk with you down the path. Thank Lord. Who's going to inherit it? The redeemed. Who would it be? Notice, I can only teach my types now. Notice, Brother Lee. Who come out on the new earth with Noah, the prophet? Those who went in with him in the ark. Is that right? That's who walks out on it. Eh? Those who went in with Noah by his message was the one who walked out upon the new earth after his water baptism. The one who goes in with Jesus now, how do you get into him? By one spirit. And he is the word. You become part of him. What part of him are you? The word that's living of this hour, recognizing. You walk out with him in the millennium. That's when you walk out. Notice, not a new generation, a transplanting. You say, oh, Brother Branham. <laughs> Notice, if God could raise up Elijah and take him up 2,500 years ago to transplant him back into the earth again to be a prophet for the Jews, how much more can he do the bride? Amen. After Noah came out of the ark, notice what was said to Noah. After he came out of the flood, just like it was with Adam before. After he came out of all the new earth, said, multiply and replenish the earth after the flood. Notice, was to be fruitful, replenish the earth as Adam at the first. Now you can see exactly here. Now listen real close. Adam was to multiply and replenish the earth. Is that right? Noah was to, after the new world destroyed was to multiply and replenish the earth. Get it? Amen. Now can't you see what the serpent seed is? What replenished the earth? You get it? Yes. All right. You see how Satan got to Eve now. Yes. That's why death has reigned on earth ever since. And heavens, earth, beast. Atmosphere is all cursed of God because of it. That's the curse, because Satan got to this first. Jesus came to redeem it back to the Father. In order to do this, he became part of it, as it just went through. And from that very dust, the part Jesus was himself being redeemed, through him all of the attributes of God are redeemed with the earth. He was a spoken word. We who are redeemed is part of him. Then if you can recognize, see, the Pharisees claimed they were, but you see my first illustration. There was only that by intellectual. 
They couldn't recognize the Word when it was made manifest right before them. They said, this man's an evil spirit. Now, today we're called false prophets. We're called every dirty thing could be called by religious people, see? by great and talented man. See, they just don't understand. See? It's water baptism wasn't sufficient to cleanse it, neither is theirs. Sanctification of the blood brought it back, cleaned it. But the baptism of the fire cleansed it, like it did his bride, like justification, sanctification, baptism, the Holy Ghost. Never promised to raise up a new race, as I've said, but he promised to redeem the fallen. Then that was the, the predestinated in inherit it as he has promised. And he's the unchangeable God. We know that. Remember, God took Elijah after the rapture and translated, transplanted him back among the people to take the place as a prophet among his people pretty soon. He will do that. And has kept him alive these 2,500 years. He's to appear again. Notice again, he raised up Moses from the dead. Where's his grave? Can anybody find it? Read the book of Jude. <laughs> See? Satan, the archangel disputing with the archangel, Satan said, Thus the Lord rebuke you, disputing over the body of Moses. And here are Peter, James, and John standing there looking at him on Mount Transfiguration. Right there in the land where the mountains to be raised up to dwell in. See, he come to redeem it. See, there was the raptured church then represented. There was the land that are asleep represented. Amen. Whereabouts? In the city. Amen. Up on top of the mountain. Amen. See, there was Peter, James, and John looking on, three, a witness. There was Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. Amen. That's a heavenly witness. See? And there was Moses, the dead had been raised up. There was Elijah, the rapture was still alive. And it was both represented on this holy mountain. Amen. Amen. And Jesus, the Redeemer, when God up above him, like this, overshadowed him, said, This is my beloved son. Remember, Jesus said uh, about a day before that, he said, Verily I say unto you, that some are standing here now will not see death until they see the kingdom of God established in power. Amen. What was it? The resurrected dead and the raptured saints together. Caught up together to meet him in the air with God overshadowed him and Jesus standing there in the shadow. Then this is my beloved son in whom I will to please him. The order of the new kingdom. Oh, brother, sister. Death doesn't change you. Death only changes your dwelling place. See? Remember, Samuel, when he was dead and been buried for two years, he was in paradise. And the witch of Endor called him up and Saul recognized him, and she did too, and fell upon her face. He hadn't changed one bit. Amen. He was still the same Samuel after being dead two years, and he was still a prophet. Amen. He said, tomorrow you'll fall in battle, your son with you, but this time tomorrow night you'll be with me. And that's just what happened. Amen. See? And when Moses returns back in Elijah for Revelations 11, there will still be prophets. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. And over yonder, Amen. in the last city where the Lamb is the light, I'll know you, Brother McKinney. I'll know you, my people, Amen. my jewels of the crown. When they come from the east and the west to the city, when 1,500 miles square, she'll be sitting there in the city built four square. When you're sitting there in the holy mount where God sits upon the mount and Jesus on the throne and the golden trumpet sounds when Joseph leaves to walk down through the paradise and the children of God fall upon their knees and worship him knowing they were redeemed. Hallelujah. 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 Sometimes I grow homesick for heaven and the glory I there shall behold. What a joy that will be when my Savior I see in that beautiful city of gold. I'm down for that beautiful city the Lord has prepared. Isaiah said in Isaiah 9, 6, And of his peace and of his increase there shall be no end. Amen. The government shall be upon his shoulders. His name will be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, the mighty God, the everlasting Father. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and of his increase, and of his peace, there is no Amen. Even the animals is there. 
Oh, my! The bear will be gentle, and the wolf will be tame, and the lion shall lay down by the lamb, <laughs> and the beast from the wild will be led by a child. But I'm going to be changed. I'll be changed for this creature that I am. On that day comes, for I'm going to that city. I'm bound for that beautiful city. I feel the redeeming power in my whole heart now. This isn't so loud, throw my life away. I've taught others deceitful things. But when I look down and see that the promise he made of this day and see it vindicated, and look at this 1,500 mile square congregation set here, an elect that's been called from denominations and races and creeds and things. Gather together as I see the word vindicating itself. I know beyond one shadow of doubt the jewels of my crown will outshine everything in the world of that day. There will come a time, people, we're not getting here for in vain. We're only waiting for that time. It is very, very late. But Jesus is still very, very near. And his glory is wonderful. His name shall be called Counselor. That city, can you see it? Amen. There's where the bride and the groom will settle and never again. Now, if you think it's wonderful when we drive hundreds of miles to sit here and feed on his word, which this is only a shadow. What will it be when we live in the city with you? When I live next door neighbor to you. And when we eat of those trees. And we will walk in those streets. When we walk up those streets of gold to the fountain. Drink from the fountain. Walk into the paradises of God with angels hovering the earth singing the anthem. Oh, what a day that will be. It's worth all. The road seems rugged sometimes. It gets hard. But oh, it'll be so little when I see him. So little. What will the bad names and things that they've said, what will that be when I see him in that beautiful, beautiful city of God? Let's bow our heads. I'm bound for that beautiful city. My Lord has prepared for his own. Where all the redeemed of all ages sing gloria round the white throne. Sometimes I go home sick for heaven, and its glories I there shall be oh what a joy that will be when my Savior I see. In that beautiful city of gold, on the island of Patmos, John saw it. <laughs> Dear Jesus, this hope, my hope's built on nothing less, Lord. That's the mother of my heart, that city, the great king. God, don't let one here perish, please. May we examine our lives again today, Lord, waiting for the coming of the Lord where all of them redeemed. How yonder in that great Colosseum in Rome where them Christians has eat up the line, shall the dust break forth someday. There will be no graveyards on the hillside of glory, no doorknobs will hold a funeral wreath, no tear will spot upon it, no, no, no heaped up sod, no storms will strike it. It will all be glorious there. Help us, Lord. If there is one here that's called to this wedding supper of the Lamb, this thousand years of millennium reign, and to then enter into the city after the honeymoon is over. The millennium is merely the honeymoon. Then she, the bride takes his, bridegroom takes his bride home. It's hers, her bridegroom, his bride. Oh, he's gone to prepare a house 
since he's become engaged. May we be true to him who is the Word, for he is the Word. Regardless of how others try to sass us, keep us away from it. Lord, draw me nearer. For sometimes I grow homesick for heaven, and its glory I there shall be Oh, what a joy that will be when my Savior I see in that beautiful city of gold. The future home of the groom and bride. He's coming back into the wedding supper. It's going to be three and a half days. Then return again in the millennium on her honeymoon. And then he's He's going to bring the city into view, like the bridegroom taking the bride to her surprise. How the little bride stands there in awe as she looks at her future home. And by faith today, Lord, we see it yonder. It'll be right here on this earth. You promised it. Your church will be completely redeemed one of these days, and then your world will be redeemed, the rest of the particles. But first you have redeemed your people, their bodies. That's made up of the world. Help us, God. If there's one here who isn't just exactly sure of that, Lord, may they receive it just now. I know it's been long and hot, but people, we won't always be standing here. I won't always be your pastor. Let's make it sure. Is there a way, Brother Branham? Yes. Become a part of the Word. A part of the word of today. Can't be a part of the word of Moses' day. That part's done made up. That was the feet. We're at the head now. This is Christ. Not the arms time back in Luther. No, this is the head time. Christ, the head stone, comes to the body. If you're not just feel exactly right about it, wherever you can, Will you raise up your hand just so I can see you? Let everybody else keep their hands down. God bless you. Thank, remember me in prayer, Brother Branham. I want to be there so bad. I, I don't want to miss it, Brother Branham. I, I'm checking. I'm doing everything I can, but pray for me now, will you? God bless you. While you're thinking of it now, just pray. Say, God, it's in your own heart. See, if you feel something t- tingling at your heart, that's what it is. It's that attribute trying to declare itself. I am bound for that beautiful city. My Lord has prepared for his own. Where all the redeemed of all ages will sing glory around white throne. Sometimes I grow homesick for heaven, and the glories I there shall be. Oh, what a joy that will be when my Savior I see in that beautiful city. Of gold. Heavenly Father, take us now, Lord. Let the great shepherd, the great redeeming shepherd, the great shepherd who left glory knowing that some of the attributes was lost on the great valleys of sin, where the wolves and the, the animals would soon devour that little sheep. But he left the Golden Carters came down into the earth and has made one of us so he could declare the love of God to us. There he found them, some of them in denominations, some of them in the house of ill fame, some of them on the streets blind, some of them in the hedges and highways. But he redeemed everyone that the Father had ordained him to redeem. 
and he commissioned us that we would live this part of the Word for our ages. And we see the great reformation of Luther in that age, and of Wesley and the Pentecostal. Now we're looking for the headstone of the city. Oh God, we know the age and the promise that we are given for this day, how that this is to be restored again. The evening light shall ripen the fruit of it, and it shall come to pass that there will be a day that cannot be day or night, it can be called, but in the evening time it shall be light. That same glorious Son of God manifesting Himself in human flesh up here on the earth, making the promise live itself exactly, blinded to the eyes of the Pharisees and Sadducees and Herodians and so forth. And today it repeats again, the Word being manifested, just like it was, the Word knowing the secret of the heart, just exactly the way it was, as the Scripture said, which cannot be broken. Help us, God, to realize it. Help these now who raise their hands. May they buckle up a little tighter, shod themselves with the gospel of peace, put on the full armor of God, pull the helmet down, take the shield of faith, march forward from the day on. Grant it, Lord, just a little while we'll be summoned. Then the rapture will come. Just a little bitty group like Enoch will be taken up. Then the remnant of the woman's seed that keep the commandments of God, Jews, have the testimony of Jesus Christ, Gentiles, will be hunted down like dogs and shall give their life for their testimony. Then one great morning, the break of the millennium for the, the honeymoon will start. And then the rest of the dead live not for the end of the thousand years. Then at the end of the thousand years, there was a judgment showing that Ham was in the ark and Ham is still there in the remnant. Ones that heard it and rejected it will have to be judged. Now grant it, Lord, that we'll not be considered among them, but will be in the call to the wedding supper. For we do recognize Jesus among us today. We're going in with him, out of the world, into him. Let us walk forth in that city. Come out with him. Get an old, Lord. I ain't got many more sermons to preach. I'm certainly trusting you. I'm looking for that city like my father Abraham did. There's something in me tells it's coming. I'm trying everywhere, Lord, to spread the light. Call. Let not one of these, Lord, how beautifully a while ago you reveal that to me from the circumference of about 1,500 miles just one here and there are set together today. They're gathered to one little spot, waiting for that city to appear. We profess that we're pilgrims and strangers, we're outcasts. The heathen, the world laughs and makes fun, the religious denominations ridicule. But we are not moved by such things. Make us part of the Word, Lord, unmovable. It shall come to pass in the last days. May it be us, Lord. May we be considered among them. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You believe it? Amen. Let's raise our hands like this. I'm bound for that beautiful city. My Lord has prepared for his own, where all the redeemed of all ages will sing glory around the white throne. Some for heaven, and glory thy there shall be When my Savior I see in that beautiful city of gold. Now, if we're to dwell in that city together, just shake hands with somebody. Say, God bless you, pilgrim. Where are you from? Louisiana, Georgia, Mississippi. I'm a pilgrim, too. 
I'm looking for that city. And its glories are there shall be whole. What a joy that will be. Oh, in my say, here I There will be gentle, and the wolf will be tame, and the lion shall lay down by the lamb, oh yeah, and the beast from will be led by a child. And I'll be changed, changed from this creature that I am. Oh, oh there will be peace in the valley for me. Oh, there will be peace in the valley. Our invisible king this morning will be made manifest. Now, we'll look upon Bill Dow at 90 years old. You won't look upon me at 50. But I'll be changed that day. And when the beast from the wild will be led by a child, but I'll be changed, changed from this creature that I am. Won't you be glad? Yes. Gray hairs will be gone, the stooped shoulders. But beauty, immortal, will stand in its likeness. The sun shall shine. Wow, <laughs> wonderful. For me, oh Lord, I pray, there'll be no sadness. No more sorrow, no more trouble, I'll see. And there will be peace in the valley for me. That's what we're here for. How many of you need strength for the journey? God grant it to us. How many of you are sick in your body? Wounded soldiers. Does or more? You believe it's here, the invisible king? Things visible, invisible, are made manifest by the visible. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever, only the corporal body. Now, if this is his spirit that's preached this through me, he'll do the works that he did when he was here. Oh, how wonderful. I am bound for the promise. I am bound for the promised land. All who will come and go with me, I am bound for the promised land. All over those wide extended plains shine one eternal day there God the sun forever rains and scatters night away oh I am bound for
500 walking into the river yonder the first day the angel of the Lord appeared visible to vindicate like he did on Mount Sinai. I'd met him. I walked into the river and hundreds singing that same song for the baptism. Here he comes. I just standing. The same pillar of fire that you see in the picture there. Just standing down right down here at the river. And said, as John the Baptist was sent to forerun his first coming. Message will forerun the second coming. <laughs> oh. Go with me, I am bound for the promise. That same pillar of fire is here with us. Are you aware of it? He has made some of us for one thing and some another. If you are without one doubt, believe it, he's in the midst of the building. I believe he'll prove himself to you. Will it satisfy you? If I don't get to everyone, it's going on two o'clock. But if you're it's a little after one, rather. If you'll believe, let him ascend down upon us. Where is our faith? You got to believe that. You don't doubt it one bit. Let's go to work. I I recognize the divine presence of the being of Christ, who is the Word. And the Bible said, the Word. It's powerful in a two-edged sword, and it cuts to the mire of the bone, and discerns the thoughts that it's in the heart, revealing the secret of the heart. Look why I didn't know those things years ago, and when I said it, not knowing it, look what he's done. He said, now you'll take the people by their hand, and don't think nothing, just speak what attributes told you, say it's tumor, whatever it is, and then he said it'll come to pass. That you won't have to do that. It will discern the very thing that's in them. We've had all kinds of impersonations. We know that. Almost to deceive the elected if possible. Watch how the rest of the thing goes with the word. Then you know where it's right or not. But still Jesus remains the same yesterday, today, and forever. How many in here that's sick and knows I don't know you? Raise up your hand. Say, I, I know you don't know me. What's this? I guess everywhere. Only thing you have to do is just believe it. Oh. was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be when the Son of Man will be revealed upon the earth in the last days. When the Son of Man shall be revealed, or reveal himself in the last days. Not, not the former days, the middle days, the last days. He would reveal. And now we're in the last days. Sodom sets just exactly everything. The messengers just alike. What happened to the the little remnant was called out with Abraham's group. There was one come among them in human flesh, represented in human flesh, eating with them, drinking with them, same food as they eat, everything. He stood among them, told the message. Then he said, I'm going to do this great thing. And Abraham kept studying. Is this it? I've been looking for a city. Is this the king? And he said, why did he still doubt this in the tent behind him? Abraham said, Lord God, Elohim. Because he discerned Sarah's thoughts. Jesus said it would repeat again when he would be revealed in the last days. The headstone coming into the body to redeem the... That's to redeem coming to take his own. He's here with us. Now, it's only about a dozen hands or more went up. I believe 
that God can heal every one of you. Right? I believe you are. I don't believe that a person really could sit in a place like this without in this kind of time, in this atmosphere, without knowing and recognizing something. I want you to pray. I want you to get what's wrong with you in, in, in your heart. See? And then begin to pray. Say, Lord Jesus, reveal this. I'm, I'm speaking to you. What's wrong with me? And now you send your Holy Spirit to Brother Branham to fulfill what he said to be the truth. And this message that he's talked today about you, I know it'll be the truth. Now reveal it to me, Lord. Speak to me. Now it's scattered coming here and around. So just pray. And yet just believe with all your heart that God will grant it. Now, I want you to look at me and pray. This is Peter and John said, look on us. He wanted something, and he's just about to receive it. And you want something, and I believe you're just about to receive it. He said, look on us. He said, silver and gold, I don't have any. But such as I have, I'll give you. Now, healing, I don't have any. That's all in Christ. But such as I have, a gift of God, give I thee, faith to believe him. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, every one of you be healed. Believe him. If thou canst believe. A little lady sitting there looking at me. She's crying a few minutes ago, praying. Got a thyroid troubles about her. I don't know you. You're a stranger to me. That is true, isn't it? You're not from here. You're from Chicago. This is Alexandra. That's right. Wave your hand. I go back to Chicago and be well. What does she touch? Same thing that woman with the blood issue touched. The border of his garment, not mine. There's a little lady sitting right down among the crowd, if I can make her to understand me. You have raised your head sideways. I don't know you. You're a stranger to me, but you're suffering with a stomach trouble. Your husband sits next to you. He has something wrong with his ear. Your name is Zep. You're strangers to me. You're not from here. You're from Michigan. That's right, wave your hands. Go back to Michigan well. Your faith makes you whole. If thou canst believe, all things are possible. Little lady there with throat trouble, sitting right back here on the inn in Georgia, dressed in white. Go back down to Georgia well. Jesus Christ makes you well. You believe it. Lady sitting there looking at me, running into the seat. She got sinus trouble. She'll believe it. God will heal her. Miss Brown, believe with all your heart. Jesus Christ, man. You're a stranger to me, but he knows you. You believe it? Raise up your hand. That's right. Laying here on this pot. Now look over here. She's been suffering going on. If I could heal her, I'd do it, sir. I can't heal. She's not from here. Come a long way. You're from Missouri. Your troubles are internal. But if you'll believe with all your heart and don't doubt, Jesus Christ is healing. Go back to Missouri well and give your testimony. You believe it? And accept it. And take your cot and go home. Jesus Christ, thank you well. Do you believe? That's the identification of the eternal King's presence. Do you believe it now with all your heart? Now he certainly made a ring right around through this building. You believe it with all your heart? You believe you're in his presence? Now, you believe and accept that you're one of the delegation of this kingdom? Raise your hand. Jesus said, These signs shall follow them that believe. 
If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. We are one another. You're part of me. I'm part of you. We're all part of Christ. Now together, let's lay our hands on each other. The woman on the cots got up, moving around, going back home to be well. Amen. You're everyone healed if you believe it. Now, put your hands on one another, and you are this part of Christ. You pray for the person you got your hands on, just the way you want to. Lord Jesus, we recognize you here. You're our king. You identify yourself among us. We thank you for this presence. And Lord, you said, if you say to this mountain, be moved, don't doubt it. Believe what you said will come to pass. You can have it. You can have what you said. Then in obedience to this commandment, in obedience to the word of God, which cannot fail, we as your delegates from 1,500 miles square like the city, we say to Satan, the defeated devil, your end is to be burned. We are the delegation from the city. It's four square. The city where the Lamb is alive. We are the expressed attribute of God Almighty, who Jesus Christ has redeemed by His grace. Satan, come out and leave every sick person that's in here. In the name of Jesus Christ, holy hands that's been redeemed because they believe the Word and are attributes of God's thought. Now, them hands is upon each other. You cannot hold them any longer. Come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, he's here. His word says he's here. Your presence and your face speaks of your one of the delegation. Even ever geographically measure that we can show it is. Can you recognize that you're redeemed sons and daughters of God? Do you recognize this is your home? This is where you're going. That's why you come here. That's why you come to Christ. You're feeding on His Word. And if you can have a time like this here, just by His expressed attributes, what would it be when we come into His presence? Oh, it'll be wonderful. Each one of you has a right to heal the sick. Lay your hands upon the sick. Each one of you has a right to baptize. If somebody sure has not been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the pool's open. That's the only way you're going to make it. That's right. Just obey every word. Remember, one little phase of the word in the beginning caused every sin on earth. Jesus said, Whosoever shall take one word away from this, or add one word to it, won't go in. His name's off the book. As soon as it does. And there's no place in the Bible where anybody was ever baptized in the church otherwise than in the name of Jesus Christ. If you haven't been baptized that way, you better do it. Well, said, don't make any difference. It did to Eve. Satan said, oh, surely God, you know God. But he did. He said so. He gives Peter the keys to the kingdom. What was bound at Pentecost is bound forever. That's the reason the bride coming to review the second time, there has to be a church called out of the latter day like it was in the first day. This is like the trees come from its roots up to the bride tree, like it did in that time. God's masterpiece again, as it said two Sundays ago, to be taken to the city. God bless you. I now believe. Satan is defeated. He knows he's on the earth. He's going like a roaring lion. It isn't long till he's, he's finished. He knows his time. He's going like a roaring lion. But remember, the Prince of Peace stands by. The great divine one, the architect of my being, the architect who built me what I am who built you what you are, is here. If the architect, who knows how to put the building together in its right place, who knows better than the architect? And he's here to prove himself, he's here. Now it's based upon your faith. Believe. Only believe. <laughs> I'm bound for that beautiful city My Lord has prepared for his own Where all the redeemed of all ages will sing Gloria round my throne. Sometimes I go home sick for heaven. Well, this is all over. And the glory I there behold. What a joy that will be when my Savior I City of gold. Remember, 
at the church tonight, they'll be giving communion. If you're here in the city yet, would like to come. We'd like to have you. It's a memorial of what we're going to eat one of these days with him. I love you. I don't know how to express it. I think you're the salt of the earth. And I hear your behavior out amongst the world. And that gives me more confidence in you. But think this little group will be lovely as we are, will be broken up on these days. We'll dream of this. But if one of us happens to pass away before we meet again, we'll, I will meet you in the morning by the bright river side. When all sorrows has drifted away, I'll be standing by the port of when the gates open wide at the close of life's long weary day. See you, they know you. You will know me in the morning by the smile that I wear. I will meet you in the morning in the city that is built or square. Now, let's stand. Take the name of the You love him? Amen. Isn't he wonderful? Amen. Do you believe this is true? Amen. Are you headed that way by the grace of God? Amen. Until we get there, you take the name of Jesus with you as a shield from every snare. And when temptations around you gather, just breathe that holy name in prayer. That's all to do until we see you again, all right? Take the name of over my message. Someday, the Lord willing, I'll come back and take these avenues and pick it up, see, or we can have more time. You've been hollering about not staying long enough. We'd have today. It's hot. But now, God bless you. I like that singing. A neighbor here said the other night when they turned the outside speaker off, said, I enjoyed the message so much, but why did you turn that pretty singing off see, on the outside? So, neighbor, if you're listening in this morning, I think we got the best neighbors there is in Jeffersonville. We park our cars in front of their houses and everything else. They don't say nothing about it. We just go on. So we're thinking, oh, how wonderful he is. God be with you now. Name. Oh. Dismiss this just in a few moments. God be with you. We meet at Jesus. That's the great city at the throne. We meet. Shall we meet? God.